Welcome to the School of Engineering at Dayanand Sagar University, main campus, Haroholdi Kanakpura Road, Bangalore. A place that values research, innovation, and creativity. Our industry aligned curriculum offers a blend of theoretical knowledge, practical experience, academic projects, and internships for a rewarding career in engineering. With an interdisciplinary approach, you can explore your interests by selecting open electives. The on campus innovation labs, led by professors of practice, provide immersive learning and expertise to find the best solutions to real industry problems and give a different dimension to the students' mini and major academic projects. Our Center for Entrepreneurship supports startup opportunities and provides a perfect platform to launch your next big idea into successful ventures. We also prepare you for advanced studies in the latest futuristic technologies. Our BTEC programs offer the perfect combination of academic rigor and functional experience in this ever-evolving technological landscape of the future. Experience a whole new world of academic excellence in a global environment. Dayanand Sagar University. Live the dream. Good evening students. So uh, we'll start the session now. We have chemistry lecture today by Priyanka ma'am. So ma'am is here. We'll start the session. Uh, ma'am, you can take over the session. We'll start. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Actually, it is biology teacher. I'm a biology teacher and not chemistry. I'm going to take a biology session today. I hope I'm audible to everyone. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so I'll start sharing my screen. So I'll start with the chapter itself directly. One minute. So fine. Uh, I'll be starting with uh, reproduction in uh, organisms. Hope I'm audible. I'll start with. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible, ma'am. I'm um, just give me a minute so that I can finish it. Yeah. Um. So we uh, we will start with reproduction in organisms. So as we all know, uh, reproduction is nothing but uh, reproducing uh, and the young ones. It, it can be a, a animal or it can be a plant or it can be a microorganism. Every organism, every living organism on the earth go through this process called as reproduction. And it just means that reproducing the new young ones, right? So before going to the part, we will just see what is lifespan. So lifespan is nothing but uh, as we all know, it is the period of time between the birth and the death of an organism. Death in the sense, it should be a natural death. It cannot be an accident or anything which is happening as such. So it should be a natural death. So the period of time between the birth and the death of an organism, we say it as a lifespan. So as I have listed few um, lifespan of organisms, uh, I'll just read out for you guys. That is a rose, we can see five to seven years. A rice plant, that is for three to seven months. Banyan tree is for 400 years, 400 plus years. 
and banana trees for three to two to three years and dog if if you have a pet like every dog most of the dogs they have the lifespan of 22 years butterfly is for one to two weeks a fruit fly is for two weeks and parrot to the surprise it is for 140 years crocodile 60 years horse 40 to 50 tortoise 150 to 100 to 150 crow is for 15 years cow is for 22 and elephant for 50 to 70 years so these are all the list of um, a few organisms which we have listed and their lifespan so then we will go um, before uh, going to the uh, thing uh, reproduction is of two types as we all know reproduction is of two types one is sexual reproduction the other one is asexual reproduction so as, uh, as we all know asexual reproduction is um, uh, it happens through a single parent there will be no involvement of two different parents over and in sexual reproduction there will be involvement of two different parents or two different uh, sex will be involved male and female sex right so we will see the types of asexual reproduction here so types of in that types of asexual reproduction the first one is fission right so fission in the sense plant cell or whatever the parent cell is there sorry the parent cell here divides into two or more individuals the parent cell itself divides into two or more individuals so as we know examples are protista and uh, the protists and monerans right coming to this uh, fission so as i said the parent cell itself divides into two or more so based upon the number of daughter cells obtained we have two types that is primary fission and the multiple fission right so primary fission is nothing but the parent cell divides into two daughter cells, the two uh, uh, ultimate daughter cells. You can see over here in the picture. So here the parent cell has been divided into, it elongates through binary fission and divides into two daughter cells, right? Examples will be amoeba and paramecium. So the next will be multiple fission. So where uh, the name itself says multiple means many. So the parent cell here divides into many individuals. Example is plasmodium and amoeba. So um, there's one condition regarding amoeba. So where it goes, uh, so if you see in both the fissions, binary as well as multiple fission, uh, we have uh, amoeba as an example, correct? So in both the um, organisms, you can see uh, binary fission and multiple fission. It means that, amoeba under unfavorable condition it undergoes the formation of a cyst means it it, it undergoes the formation of a cyst we call it we call it as encystation and later whenever it gets its favorable condition whatever the cyst is there it undergoes multiple fission so we call it as pseudopodiospores and that what happens is uh, this in the inside part of whatever the cyst is there that begins to form as a spores and again they get liberated as a many amoeba so this is the only condition in amoeba all other organisms they undergo their respective fission uh, method so the next part in the asexual reproduction is budding so here the bud grows in the parent body itself means from the parent body here if you see the picture from the parent body itself a small bulged portion arises and that grows into its own individual, matures and gets detached as a new organism or new individual. So the examples of budding uh, organisms involved are hydra, sponge, yeast, etc. So here if you see in the picture, yeast and hydra I have given. So then third type of asexual reproduction is fragmentation. So here the body itself, the parent body itself breaks into fragments, means pieces and each fragments will grow into a new adult, right? So the best example will be the hydra again. The next part is your vegetative propagation. So here, uh, the vegetative part of the plant, I mean any part of the plant apart from the reproductive part, we call it as vegetative part. So the, repro the production of offsprings takes place from the vegetative propagules in the plants or vegetative part of the plants. 
So if you see a uh, potato is the best example, all the rhizome of the ginger, if you take a piece of that and uh, uh, provide it a favorable condition, they become an adult plant or adult organism, whatever. So here, so some more examples are bulbil of agave and uh, leaf buds of bryophyllum, offset of water has hyacinth. These are all the examples of vegetative propagation. So other than these, uh, whatever we have listed before, other than these, uh, sorry. Uh, give me a minute. So other than these four uh, asexual reproduction, few more um, other things are there, other structure formation will be there like zoospore formation in Chlamydomonas, then conidia in penicillium and gemules in sponges. So all these are the other reproductive ways, um, other uh, asexual reproductive ways where these organisms reproduce and give birth to their young ones. So the next part will be the uh, sexual reproduction. So sexual reproduction, as I told you, in the sexual reproduction, there will be a, a involvement of two different parents, that is a male and a female parent is required in sexual reproduction, or there will be formation of gametes here, two different types of gamete formation will be there, there in the sexual reproduction, which leads to the formation of new organism, right? So in this um, uh, sexual reproduction, if you see, there are two phases or the organism undergoes different phases. So the beginning phase, we call it as juvenile phase. It is nothing but the period of growth to reach its uh, puberty or to reach the level of sexual reproduction. That age or that period, we call it as juvenile phase. So in a higher plants, it indicates the end of vegetative phase. Means once the reproductive phase is attained by the organism or the plant, the, that ends the vegetative phase and there the starts the reproductive phase. So based on that, we have different kinds of plants like annual, biennial plants means they show when, where they will cut off their vegetative phase and where they will start their reproductive phase or and the senescent phase. So that, based on that uh, phases, they are classified into annual and biennial plants. Then unusual flowering, say in apart from this, as we said, uh, the plant undergoes vegetative phase and then follows the reproductive phase. But in few or a few uh, plants or few um, um, uh, trees, there are unusual flowering happens. Means the uh, the reproductive phase will be very rare in them and it happens once in a year or 12 years once the vegetative or uh, reproductive uh, age will be reached. Say for example, if you see bamboo flowers, they uh, their uh, reproductive phase is attained only once in a lifetime. They, they reproduce once only once in a lifetime and they will die off. So in a similar way, if you see, uh, there is one more flower named Strobilanthus kuntinia, it is a flower. It flowers only once in 12 years, means the reproductive phase can be seen only once in 12 years. So these are all the unusual flowering plants which we see. Apart from that, uh, so based upon this uh, reproductive phase, in the reproductive phase, uh, there are uh, different kinds again. So based upon their breeding season, Mammals are of two types, that is seasonal breeders and the continuous breeders. Seasonal breeders means they exhibit a reproductive cycle only during favorable condition. It means they show their reproductive cycles or they will start their reproduction only under favorable condition. And continuous breeders, they are reproductively, they are very, they are very active, it means they will be throughout, the, the reproductive phase will be throughout their lifetime, right? So coming to the word senescence, senescence is the last phase of the lifespan, that is the end of the reproductive phase. Once the reproductive phase ends, that is said to be the senescence or it's said to, it is also called as old age. So coming to the sexual reproduction events, the events which happens in the sexual reproduction, 
Um, so the first will be pre-fertilization events, means what happens before fertilization. Right? So before fertilization in sexual reproduction, as I said, gamete formation is very much required. So the once the gamete is formed, it has to be transferred. So this is what the events which happens under the initial stages of sexual reproduction, we call it as pre-fertilization events, okay? So formation of this male and female gametes, uh, it takes place in the different individual, as I say, it, it takes place in the respective uh, parents. There will be two types of gamete formation takes place, okay? So that is homogametes, it's also called as isogametes, means here, similar gamete formation takes place. The gamete formation will be very similar, means they are all same. Once the gamete is formed, all the gametes will be same. So then the other one is heterogametes. Here we can see the male and female gametes, they are different. So now I hope you understood what is homogametes and heterogametes. So homo means all the gametes are same. There will be no male gamete and female gamete. And in heterogametes, we can see there is a differentiation that is said as male and female gametes. So male gamete is said to be the anthrozoid, and in other terms, it is called sperm. And in female gamete, it is called egg or ova. Okay. So usually, this uh, male gamete and female gamete can be seen in uh, one alga that is focus. Apart from that, uh, all the mammals and humans we are all included in the heterogamete formation. Right. So formation of these gametes, the process is called as gametogenesis, right? So this is the first stage of sexual reproduction, that is a pre-fertilization event. So where, based upon this uh, gamete formation, we have uh, divided the organisms, uh, or based upon the uh, parent, where they produce the gametes, they are divided into bisexual and unisexual, right? Bisexual means here the male and female sex organs in the same individual. They'll be present in the same individual. The single individual will have both the sex organs, male and female, as well in the unisexual um, organisms, male and female sex organs will be in different individual. Means the parent will be different. Male and female parent will be there. But here, a single parent will be, bear both the sex organs. And coming to uh, uh, one um, uh, one more uh, type in fungi, fungi we say it as homothallic and heterothallic. So they can be homothallic sometimes or they can be heterothallic. Right? So homothallic in the sense, in the fungi terms, it is bisexual. In fungi, we say heterothallic means unisexual. Right? So monoecious, in, in terms of plants, if you take, we say it as monoecious and dioecious. Monoecious means male and female flowers on the same plant. Examples will be cucurbits and coconuts. And dioecious means male and female flowers will be present in the different plants. Example is most of the NGOs one, that is papaya, date palm, all that. Right. So this is based upon the sexuality in the organisms. Uh, in mammals, we have bisexual, unisexual. In fungi, we say it as homothallic and heterothallic. And in uh, plants, we say it as monoecious and dioecious. So now, uh, in the pre-fertilization events, once the gamete is formed, there happens the cell division, right? So the gamete next undergoes the cell division. So what happens here is, uh, a few gametes, they undergo mitotic process, and few gametes, they undergo meiotic process. So um, like uh, monerans, fungi, algae, and biophrase, they have haploid parental body, that is a single uh, nuclei parent body, single chromosomal parent body. So here what happens, haploid gametes, uh, they produce only haploid gametes by the process called as mitosis. Right? So in other uh, organisms like uh, pterophyta, gymnosperms, angiosperms, and animals, so they have the diploid parental body. Is the um, nucleus will have two set of chromosomes, and they produce haploid gametes by meiosis. That is meiotic process. Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry for the interruption. Uh, yes. 
Yeah. Student is requesting you that, ma'am, after explanation, uh, MCQ teaching, uh, please uh -huh. ask questions to them. Uh, they are also solving the answers. So they'll uh, put in the QA box and you can go through it through that, sir. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so I was in, yeah, meiotic division. So where, so this deployed parental body, they undergo, uh, they, they first form the gamete mother cell and this gamete mother cell undergo meiosis and your haploid gametes will be formed, right? So then comes this gamete transfer. So generally the male gametes will be motile and the female gamete is stationary. So in fungi and algae, both, both the gametes will be uh, motile. But generally, the male gamete is motile and the female gamete will be stationary. So in some plants, the gamete transfer takes place through water medium. Means uh, There will be a compulsory water medium should be there so that the water gamete is transferred from uh, one plant to the another, like simple plants like algae, biophytes and pteridophytes. And to uh, compensate, so here water medium means it may reach the male uh, parent or it may not. So to compensate the loss of this male gamete, usually the male gamete is produced in large number and will be transported in the large number. Right? So in cross-pollination plants, the pollination helps in the transfer of pollen grains. Means usually when the uh, plants are uh, dioecious in nature, the cross-pollination or pollination takes place where usually the pollen grains are transferred uh, with the various means, wind, uh, animals, birds, or anything. Right? So the next event in the sexual reproduction is fertilization. It is also called a syngamy. So it is the fusion of gametes to form a diploid zygote. So here, yeah, both the gametes fuse to form zygote. Okay, and then few organisms are there where they don't need the fusion of gametes. Directly, the female gametes develops into a new organism that is without undergoing a fertilization process. So this is called as parthenogenesis. So if you have heard of parthenocarpi plants, par like seedless fruits, seedless uh, um, uh, whatever, grapes and all those things, this is all um, the plants which undergoes um, production of fruits without the formation of, um, without undergoing the fertilization process. In a similar way here also, if you take honeybees and some lizards and birds, they don't undergo fertilization. The female gamete develops directly into a new organism. The process is called as parthenogenesis. So once the, um, as I said, this gamete has to fertilize to form a zygote. There are two types of fertilization, external and internal fertilization. So am I going fast? Is that fine? Uh, whatever the phase is, or is it slow? Is that fine? So external fertilization, it, it happens in the external medium, means uh, the, it can be a water medium or it can be anything. So examples are algae, bony fishes, amphibians and all. The only disadvantage is here, the offspring will be very vulnerable to the predators. They, they'll not be having a uh, protection over there. So internal fertilization, it happens inside the body. That, is in, um, that usually happens in the terrestrial organisms. So it includes fungi, animals, and plants. So the next is uh, once the fertilization happens, the zygote formation takes place. So here, um, once the zygote formation takes place, what happens? That is what we call it as post-fertilization event. So this is the vital link between the two generations. The zygote formation is the vital link between. I'm requesting to go slightly slow. Okay, fine. Yeah. So um, here, what happens is um, sexually reproducing organism. As I said, once the gamete fertilizes, the zygote is formed. So right. So this zygote uh, then goes under uh, various developments. So in fungi and algae, if you see, this zygote forms a thick wall. There is there will be formation of thick wall around this zygote so that they can resist the uh, damage, whatever external damage is there, and uh, they will rest for a few 
days or few months and then they go for germination process so this usually can be seen in the plants right uh, so zygote formation as i said it is a vital link between the two generation so usually what happens in few um, algae and fungi so zygote undergoes um, hibernation we say generally so they they to resist the damage there will be thick wall formation around and then they rest for a few days and then undergo for germination process ma'am i have But, a small query yeah Yes, uh, the schedule that was shared with us today yeah states that we were supposed to go ahead with a chemistry class okay but then suddenly when biology has come a lot of parents are calling us because the schedule is already shared to them in advance no for me to it is biology sir i, I have uh, been allotted what for professor biology. ravi shankar has shared with us okay though it says chemistry as the topic okay. but in the sub topics uh-huh i think what they have mentioned as reproduction in organism and reproduction in flowering plants yes happens to be i think biology topics. biology yes these are biology so i think topics. there was a mistake from uh, professor ravi shankar instead of mentioning biology yeah they yeah, mentioned yeah. to subject as chemistry chemistry right i think i would want uh, after this session please review huh. it once with him and send us the actual ones because yep. now the confusion is our entire team is getting calls Okay. Okay. So first of all, I would like to apologize to all the students that there was a small typo error. Instead of biology, the subject has gone in as chemistry. However, the fresh schedule of chemistry will be sent across to you by today evening, and according to that schedule, we will follow the chemistry classes. Today, we will continue with the classes for biology. We are extremely sorry and apologize for this particular error that has happened in the. Uh, entire schedule of ours for today please bear with us for today and we will continue with our biology classes ma'am yeah thank thank you sir thank you um there may be uh, yeah as you said there will be some typo error it's biology i am going to handle biology classes as such right and um, so where uh, yeah i was in a zygote so once the zygote formation happens so um so what happens here is the zygote undergoes meiotic division no meiot sorry mitotic division cell cell division happens inside the zygote or the side zygote undergoes cell division mitotic cell division and cell differentiation and um, later it develops into a big mass of uh, cells called as embryo so this uh, cell division it increases the number of cells in the embryo and cell differentiation modifies this uh, whatever the differentiated cells are there it modifies into different layers in um, human beings and various kinds of tissues in organisms so these tissues further develops into organs and the complete organisms so then um, so this based up once the uh, the zygote formation takes place or once the zygote develops so based upon the zygote development the animals are divided into two types that is oviparous and viviparous or viviparous so oviparous so here animals lay fertilized or unfertilized eggs so example will be reptiles birds they lay fertilized eggs with the calcareous shell or whatever we have egg that is said to be the fertilized egg so once these fertilized egg undergoes incubation they hatch the young ones coming to viviparous so here the zygote develops into young ones inside the female parent itself or inside the female body itself later the young ones will be delivered and this happens in most of the mammals so um this uh, in viviparous if you see there will be proper care and protection will be taken uh, as a, as the young one stays inside the female body and uh, there will be great chance of survival of the young ones here then on all the other way it will be little bit uh, the chances of survival is little bit less so then we will go with the uh, question answer i hope so we ended with the chapter explanation there's nothing uh, doubt as such so let's go with the question answers so life span represents 
as we discussed in the uh, first um, slide. So lifespan represents period from birth to natural death of an organism, period from birth to reproductive maturity of an organism, period from reproductive maturity to the death of an organism, or period from adolescent to senescent phase. So as we discussed, this period from birth to natural death of an organism, that will become the right answer. Why? Because period from birth to reproductive maturity is not the lifespan. It is just the um, what, what phase we learned as, uh, if you remember, is, is it a two-way session, sir, or I'll be only um, telling out this. Uh, Ma'am, uh, students won't uh, be able to speak. Uh, they'll post their questions and queries in QA box as there's okay. a one question there. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Ma'am, post fertilization explanation, please. So like that, Ma'am, in QA box, the students will post their queries and okay. all of I, the I keep, have to keep checking this. Yes, Ma'am. Yeah, fine, fine. So yeah, somebody has asked about post fertilization explanation, correct? Yes, Ma'am. So I'll go with that and then I'll come with this question answers. Yeah, so this is what they wanted. Yeah, post fertilization events as there was some doubt. So as I said, um, in the fertilization process, so the, there will be fusion of gametes takes place. So as I said, in the gametogenesis, both male and female gametes formation takes place. And in the fertilization, the both the gametes fuse to form a zygote right so in the post fertilization events so zygote is the major link between the gametes and the young ones that is the link between the gamete and the young one formation that's why we call it as a link between two generations so here what happens so the sexually reproducing organism they begin they begin their life with the formation of zygote itself where like our organisms like fungi and algae the zygote whatever formed is there around it there will be formation of a thick wall there will be formation of a thick wall which resists the damage means they they won't immediately uh, give rise to young one the zygote they will undergo rest for few um, days or few months before they germinate to form a new organism right so that is one part. So I mean, other organisms, the most of the organisms, so this the zygote undergo embryogenesis. Embryogenesis is a process of embryo formation, the process in which the zygote undergoes the formation into um, uh, embryo. That is called as embryogenesis. So what happens in this process, uh, whatever the zygote is there, it undergoes mitotic cell division. Mitosis happens. So where there will be formation of numerous number of cells inside the uh, zygote. So this cells, they undergo cell differentiation. Means the cells, they will get differentiated. Group of cells, they will uh, group themselves to become into various tissues. And this various tissues, they will get developed into the various organs. And finally, the new organisms will be formed. So this is what happens in the post-fertilization events. And once this embryo formation takes place, so uh, this uh, during the zygote formation, as I said, uh, the development, during the zygote development, the embryo can become a fertilized egg or unfertilized egg, or it can uh, give rise to the young one, right? So the animal which lay egg, we say it as oviparous, and the animal which give rise to the young one, we call it as viviparous. I hope uh, this is clear with the post-fertilization. Right? There's a query from a student. Yeah. But I think uh, he has not keyed in with proper English. Yeah. Ma'am, yes, please sir. MCQ or don't see the answer because we are not solved answer. Okay. So, I, I, it's, it's so they are telling that, yeah, I, we should remove the answers. I should remove the answers as such. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I think that's what he meant. I hope you're able to see the Q&A. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm seeing that. You can see Thank the you. question asked by Rachu. 
Ah, right, right, right. Um, yeah, so the right now I how I can remove. I have already done the slides as such. Um, no problems. So, Go ahead, ma'am. Maybe you could explain I, it to them. Yeah, um, maybe uh, the next chapter or next slides I can go with that. Sure. Yeah. So, life uh, span represents. So again, uh, we will go with the question answers where the first question uh, says, "Lifespan represents what?" So, lifespan represents uh, the period from birth to the natural death of an organism. As I have already given the answers, I'll give you the explanation why not the other. options okay so period from birth to reproductive maturity we call it as a vegetative phase if you remember we had discussed in the slide it is called as vegetative phase and the period from reproductive maturity to the death we call it as a reproductive phase right and uh, period from adolescent to senescent phase is also called as a reproductive phase so all these three says the phases of the life but the first answer says the life span that is from the birth to the natural death of an organism right so the next sorry the next question is life span depends on what life span depends upon the size of an organism the shape of an organism a and b both and none of these so here so what what does this life span depends upon is the question whether it depends upon the size or it depends upon the shape so no it this as the answer says none of this means life span doesn't depend upon the size or the shape it depends upon the genetics the environment where the organisms live and the lifestyle it follows so whatever the uh, genetics means um, as we had discussed in the slide the parrot can survive only for uh, 60 years or crocodile stays for some 70 years all these is based upon the genetics they have been come up like that and or sometimes the environment and the lifestyle we follow so on the life span depends upon all this and not on the size and the shape and then comes the organisms we have to arrange based upon their life span So my sound is not clear. Is it clear? My sound is clear. Your yeah, your sound is clear, ma'am. Yeah, fine. So we have to arrange the following organisms based upon their lifespan and ascending order of their lifespan. Here we see a uh, parrot, crocodile, crow, butterfly. That's one option. Tortoise, crocodile, crow, and butterfly is the second option. Butterfly, crocodile, and parrot is the third and uh, sometimes a and b they say so here the right answer as i have selected it is c butterfly crocodile and parrot so as the, why because butterfly life span is 1 to 2 weeks crocodile life span is 60 years and parrot's life span is 140 years so hence we have selected butterfly and then crocodile and then the parrot so hope the answer is clear so the next one which of the following is the correct statement with respect to the life span of an organism mango tree has much longer life span as compared to the people tree single celled organism doesn't show natural death life span is correlated with complexity and the habit of the plant and parrot has a shorter life span as compared to the crow so what they are they are telling is based upon the life span we have to find out the correct uh, or uh, statement so mango tree has a much longer life span as compared to people tree no people tree is the uh, tree which lives longer than the mango tree mango tree is annual uh, single celled organism do not show natural death yeah that is the right answer because single celled organisms they keep undergoing asexual reproduction and they keep dividing themselves so there is no such thing called as natural death among them right and as we know parrot is 140 years and crow is just um, i think some 40 years so that there is no comparison between these two 
and this lifespan is not correlated with the complexity or habit it is depends upon the genetics and the environment where they live right so coming to the fifth question asexual reproduction uh, here uh, what is asexual reproduction basically the question is involvement of gamete formation fusion of male and female gamete without involvement of gamete formation and biparental asexual involves gamete formation no asexual doesn't asexual reproduction doesn't involve any gamete formation fusion of male and female gamete no it doesn't takes place in the asexual reproduction it takes place in the sexual reproduction without involvement of gamete formation yes that is the right answer because in asexual reproduction there will be no gamete formation takes place and biparental that is opposite sex so it happens in the sexual reproduction so if you see a b and d all this happens in the sexual reproduction only c is the correct option which happens in the asexual reproduction that is gamete formation will not be there right and then coming to clone what is this clone basically so um, they, um clone is nothing but uh, uh, is nothing but when an organism give rise to its own cell it is said to be the clone so usually this can be seen in the uh, asexual reproduction where the parent cell and the daughter cell they are same they'll be same uh, genetically as well as the physically morphologically so everything will be same now those daughter cells we call it as clones so here clones are produced generally by sexual reproduction no just now i said it is produced by asexual reproduction individual genetically similar to parent yeah they are genetically similar to parent and individual morphologically similar to parent yes the individual the daughter cells will be morphologically and genetically similar to each other hence the answer will be both b and c so then next if we have to just see um uh, what is this picture so i hope the picture is visible so what they have asked is what this picture represents what basically the picture represents here a parent cell is there it has been bud formation taking place then movement of nucleus into the bud and the bud getting divided into the daughter cells or getting separated as a daughter cells so what is it basically it is nothing but binary fission in amoeba budding in amoeba budding in yeast binary fission in yeast so if you see binary fission in amoeba yes it happens where the parent itself divides into two daughter cells that is not happening here and budding in amoeba no we can't see budding in amoeba amoeba undergoes binary fission and multiple fission so b will not Madam, be is it possible to remove all those tick marks um at the time i don't think so sir because your answer is available even you know just as the question comes and yeah. after that if the explanation is given yeah students will unable to focus on it because they are seeing the answer first yeah they are already seeing the answer seeing the answer first yeah, i, I think thought this has to so be but back. yeah i'll change it for the next thing sir i think right for the next now, slide yeah please have it changed because otherwise the inquisitive for a student to ask you queries is going yeah, to be I reduced understand. i understand that so if you give me 5 minutes time i will do it off and then i'll when uh, you get the break you can do yeah. it or if yeah. you know while you are explaining you can just mm -hmm. go off screen just go ah. you can stop sharing the screen for some time yeah that, that i can discussion. do right now ha huh. and then slide by slide just remove it and then post yeah. it again but you can okay. continue your chat with the student so that at least next two three slides you are able to remove the tick answers ha huh. got it got it got it sir so give me a minute uh i'll just yeah, yeah. Uh, stop the sharing and i'll do it off sure sure yeah thank you anikesh continue to guide madam yes sir students please hold on we are getting the slides modified so that you are able to get it into a sequence where 
you know the question is asked the options are shown and you could guess or you could work on the answer give your things in the q and a box and then madam will be able to explain it to you i also will request all the students who are currently there to share this link with all your friends we are happy to state that as an as more and more students can attend this free classes we will be happy that these outcomes are going to be benefited by each one of you we want you to score the highest marks that you can in the upcoming kset examinations and get the dream university for studying what you have dreamt of so please inform all your friends from your classes share the joining link with them and let them also take the benefit of live classes it is always good to get on to a hybrid live class and hear the explanations rather than just looking at the recording versions uh student uh, what are you asking for which link whether link for joining the whatsapp group or the session because the joining link for session is been sent to the whatsapp group and if you are not in the whatsapp group i'll share the link in the chat box you can join it from there uh you haven't missed any uh, session like uh, you have missed only two uh, days of the session of physics which we have shared in the group the recorded session link you can go and uh, visit there and you can get it done so today uh, it's a third day and we have biology today don't worry yuvraj it will be solved just be regular for the sessions for chemistry and physics uh, and also mathematics and biology and it will be very easier for you to understand it a whatsapp group okay i'll share it in the chat box please uh, join the whatsapp group from there madam priyanka are you ready with your presentations madam priyanka are you ready with your presentations yes sir Ma'am, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're on mute, ma'am. Oh, is it? No, ma'am. You're audible, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, ma'am. Okay. I think you're logged in from two devices. No. So I can see two names of yours. The other okay. one shows that you're on mute. Uh, sir, actually, I think there is some glitch in that. Uh, are you logged in from mobile? Mobile search account, sir. yeah i hope i have done few slides as such
yeah this we finished yeah from yeah ma'am can you speak yeah can you hear me ma'am yes, we can't hear you you are on mute anikesh look into it uh, sir i can hear ma'am uh, yeah, i can I see can two logins of professor side. priyanka uh, sir actually it's a glitch uh, the second one it's hemant sir yeah i can go ahead uh, yes ma'am is it audible clear uh, yes ma'am it's audible it's clear ma'am okay anikesh Fine. yes sir yeah ma'am can you hear yeah it's very clear yeah go ahead good sorry go ahead go ahead sorry yeah uh, yes uh, so question number 7 is what we had discussed already so the picture whatever is they are given um so should i repeat it or i'll go ahead with the eighth one i had already told the answer for the seventh so i'll go with the eighth so cell division is itself a mode of reproduction in so the question says in which uh, organisms cell division itself is a mode of reproduction so is it protists monera fungi a uh, both a and b which which will be the right answer is the question where the organism itself undergoes cell division and that is itself the mode of reproduction and uh, answer is d they say both a and b monera and protista right so they have given the answer the uh, kids have given the answer as um, d that is they undergo both protista and morena they undergo cell division the, the cell itself divides to give rise to an egg one yes that will be the right answer right so the next question zoospores is a mode of asexual reproduction in which organism here so that is chlamydomonas penicillium hydra and sponges so as i uh, showed in this slide so zoo spores are formed as a mode of sexual reproduction in one organism so um the answer will be a that is chlamydomonas right so that will be the right answer chlamydomonas as the organism which shows zoo spore formation and it is the mode of asexual reproduction in them so we have to choose a correct statement here that there are four statements uh first statement says conidia of penicillium is endo endogenous bone gemmules of sponges is an example of external budding in yeast the division is unequal and small buds are produced and zoo spore is a non motile structure so in this which one will be the right answer c only one has given the answer as c the others can you make uh, can you give the answer what is the right answer here conidia of penicillium is endogenous bone means it is outside the uh, parent body it's not the outside the parent body it, it the parent body itself forms into a conidia right so that will not be the correct statement gemmules of sponges is an example of external budding no there is no external budding gemmules are formed inside the parent body and then at the suitable condition this uh, gemmules will come out and forms the uh, new individual so that will not be the right answer in yeast the division is unequal and small buds are produced so so as somebody has given the answer that is the right answer the division is unequal and small buds are produced and zoo spore is non motile structure zoo spore is a spore um, it, it doesn't depend on the motility right so c will be the right answer sixth next question is the 11th question which of the following is not meant for vegetative propagation in angiospermic plants so which doesn't undergo vegetative reproduction that is gemmules runners bulb sucker so which will be the answer for this so a is the answer many has given a is the answer that is not meant for vegetative propagation in angiospermic plant so you have to read the question properly 
it is not meant for vegetative propagation the answer is right gemmules gemmules are not meant for vegetative propagation in angiospermic plants that takes place in fungi and algae kind of organisms then 12th question vegetative propagation in wall uniparent biparental zoospore and reproduction by flowers so what will be the right answer here so the 12th answer is so somebody has given a so 12th one somebody has told d c all answers are coming out so vegetative propagation involves what you have to understand the question here vegetative propagation is nothing but it's a form of asexual reproduction so asexual reproduction involves a single parent right so here as vegetative propagation is an asexual reproduction it is the answer the right answer is uniparent right i hope the answer is clear we'll go for the next slide so if you see uh, so is that uh, screen is clear yeah screen is clear yeah. yes ma'am fine so we have to label the um, whatever uh, the uh, the picture is given here it has a uh, um, labeling a and b we have to recognize what is a and b basically we have to name what is this right so um, there are two uh, labeling given eyes and germinating eye birds so whether a is a uh, i or germinating i bird or what you have to recognize and tell me or it is i and germinating i bird or it is an adventitious root or it is just buds what will be the answer based upon the picture you have to answer so somebody has given answer somebody is giving b b a, 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 a two a, people are told a yeah so there is one question before this uh, ma'am is it vegetative or vegetable for which question is it previous question yes ma'am okay so that is vegetative i guess vegetative fine so for the present uh, answer somebody has given a somebody has given d so here basically it is nothing but uh, potato it is uh, it undergoes vegetative propagation where so there will be i formation in the potato or there will be small depression in the potatoes we call it as an i and this depression if you allow it to uh, undergo in, or if you allow it for few days in a suitable uh, um, environment it germinates and that give rise to a new plant so basically the answer for this is a that is this is i and the germinating i birds so then the question 14 we will go with question 14 choose most appropriate statement about water hyacinth it is an aquatic plant that can propagate vegetatively at a phenomenal rate introduced in india because of beautiful flowers and shape of the fruit it reproduces by offset it drains oxygen from water which leads to death of fishes it spreads all over the water body in short period of time it is very difficult to get rid of them and last is it is in invasive weeds found growing wherever there is standing water so you have to find out which statements belongs to uh, the plant water hyacinth answer is given somebody has given c somebody has given yeah c c d a so everybody has given some of the no, maximum a. answers are given as a a right that is um that is your uh, first statement second third fourth fifth and uh, seventh right it has been given sixth and seventh sorry typo error so sixth and seventh so almost all the statements are true no i say there are there is few statement which is not true regarding water hyacinth that is 
the second statement introduced in india because of beautiful flowers and shape of the fruit no that is not regarding water hyacinth water hyacinth is a water plant it's an aquatic plant which propagates vegetatively which spreads like anything and it reproduces by offset means of reproduction in, right and it takes off all if you uh, uh, remember environmental uh, issues chapter this is the only thing this is called and uh, this this is the only plant which drains out oxygen from the water which takes off all the oxygen for their development where it leads to death of fishes and um, and it spreads all over the water body yes in a very short time it it covers the entire water body and it is very difficult to get rid of them so the right answer will be the b1 so first statement third statement fourth fifth sixth and seventh all statements are true not the second one right so the next one is the 15th question which says the term vegetative reproduction is frequently used in plants animals monerans a and c both so where we use the vegetative reproduction frequently answers are given d most of them they are telling d a d a okay b fine so here uh, okay d so vegetative uh, the term vegetative reproduction we use very frequently in uh, plants vegetative reproduction we use very frequently in only the plants right so uh, that is where we use vegetative reproduction because in plants a few plants undergo uh, i mean few in few plants the vegetative part will give rise to the young ones so there we use the vegetative reproduction term very frequently right in all, all the other things in all the other organism we say it as a asexual reproduction in monerans we say it as an asexual reproduction not the vegetative reproduction in monera there will be no bud formation in all takes place right so that will be the plant a option a will be the right answer 16th question banana is reproduced vegetatively by banana is reproduced vegetatively by stolen runner rhizome offset so what will be the right answer Sixteenth C D B D. So if you see, um, generally, uh, yeah, fine. I got the answers. Many answers are coming. Fine. So if you see this banana plant, so the um, the banana uh, roots, if you see, they are rhizome formation. There will be no root formation. They will be basically rhizome formation. and you need not to find out a banana plant take it out and uh, grow it just take a rhizome and it will grow into a new plant there is no need of seed or any other formation there will be no runner or stolen formation in banana that takes place that is the only one that is rhizome so um, 16th answer will be c rhizome which give rise to the young one then uh, 17th question eyes of potato arise from the eyes of the potato arise from node internode both a and b and d root so which will be the answer here for the 17th question c c d d is the answer d every most of them are telling d c c is right okay d is right fine so uh, coming to this potato uh, potato is nothing but is not a root it is a, a, a stem swollen stem right so potatoes will have nodes and internodes in them and basically the eyes arises from the nodal region the node of the a uh, potato is nothing but the eyes we see right so the right answer will be the 17th one no so the next question is 18th one bryophyllum arise vegetatively by adventitious bud arise from the notches present at the leaves margin 
advantageous bud arise from the notches present at the node advantageous bud arise from the notches present at the inner node none of this so bryophyllum i hope you remember that we spoke it in the budding formation in asexual reproduction the answer will be a a is right a is right a is right c somebody has told c a right so most of the answers are a um the right answer is also a adventitious bud arise from the notches present at the leaf margin at the leaf margin if you see uh, there will be some notches present and these notches will give rise to the a young one not the other there will be no node and internode formation because uh, bryophyllum itself is a a leaf kind of the plant itself is a leaf yeah right so a is the right answer uh coming to the 19th one arrange the given in the sequence gamete transfer formation of gamete post fertilization and fertilization so you have to arrange these events in the sequence which is the first second third and fourth yeah answers i'm seeing c a a a fine a yeah the right answer will be the first will be the formation of gametes the gametes will be formed or uh, the male and the female parent gives rise to the gamete and that gamete gametes in that male will be uh, motile and the female will be non motile so the gamete transfer takes place from the male to the female body then fertilization takes place then the post fertilization right so here so what happens first is formation of gamete 2 1 then 4 and then 3 will be the right sequence of events so the answer a is the right answer for that right so the next 20th one choose correct statement with respect to sexual reproduction so it means what, what do you see in the sexual reproduction it involves formation of male and female gametes only by different individual of opposite sex it is an elaborate simple and so slow process as compared to sexual reproduction zygotes are formed by the fusion of gametes which develop to form the new organism and none of this so you have to tell which is the right answer uh, involved in the sexual reproduction or related to the sex sexual reproduction yes i can see the answers 20th somebody has given d a all of this all of this a d okay so um yeah d is right c is right fine coming to the explanation if you see sexual reproduction uh it is it involves the formation of male and female gametes only by different individual of the opposite sex yeah that is of the right answer it is elaborate simple and so slow process as compared to asexual reproduction yes that is also a right answer and uh, zygotes are formed by the fusion of gametes which develops to form the new organism yeah that is also right so all this statement is right according to the sexual reproduction so the right correct answer will be all of this so we will go for the next question the period of growth where an organism is not um nature for sexual reproduction the period of growth where an organism is not the nature for sexual reproduction or not ready for the sexual reproduction what that period is called as juvenile phase vegetative phase both a and b none of this so 21st question we are discussing about 21st question so what is the period of growth where an organism doesn't undergo sexual reproduction or is not meant for sexual reproduction what that period is called somebody has given a somebody has given d yeah so coming to the answer so it's 
the period of growth in an organism we call it as a juvenile phase until he until the organism reaches puberty or until the organism reaches the reproductive age that we call it as a juvenile phase it is also called as vegetative phase so the period of growth where an organism doesn't undergo sexual reproduction or not meant for reproduction is both both the answers will be right juvenile phase as well as vegetative phase which means both same juvenile phase and vegetative phase both are same which means that the organism is not ready for reproduction it is the phase between the growth and the reproduction phase so coming to the 22nd question you have to choose the incorrect statement here not the correct incorrect statement we have to find out so in perennial species it shows clear cut vegetative reproductive and senescent phase in annual and biennial uh, species it is show it is sorry it shows cut uh, uh, clear cut vegetative reproductive and senescent phase in perennial species it is very difficult to define vegetative reproductive and senescent phase and uh, d both a and b is the right answer so what answer you are going to choose here so, so we are talking about 22nd question there are few we are answering 20th still so answer for the set 22nd we are discussing about 22nd question so somebody has given a d a so here we have to choose the incorrect statement means in perennial species it shows clear cut vegetative reproductive and senescent phase in biennial and uh, annual also it shows clear cut vegetative reproductive and senescent phase in uh, perennial species it is very difficult to define vegetative reproductive and senescent phase in d both a and b we have to choose incorrect statement and here in 22nd question the incorrect statement is a means the in perennial species we cannot make out or we cannot define the vegetative reproductive and senescent phase clearly it is very difficult and in biennial and annual it is very clear cut so the incorrect statement here is a in the perennial species it doesn't it shows clear cut vegetative reproductive and senescent phase is the incorrect statement then going to 23rd question nila kurunji flower once uh, bloom in how many years or months Uh, ma'am, you are not audible. Yeah, now. Yeah, ma'am, now it's audible. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Anila Kuranji flower once blooms in how many years? It is uh, answers. I can see. Yeah, they have given A A. Most of them has given A. Few they have told D. Yeah, somebody had a question in between. Yeah, Nila Kurunji flower once in 12 years, right? So Nila Kurunji flowers blooms. Uh, yeah, it is also called as we had discussed in the slide. That is Strobilanthus uh, kuntiana, right? That is the same flower here. It's a general name. The common name is Nila Kurunji flowers. It blooms uh, once in 12 years. The right answer is A. And further, um, sir, can I uh, pause the video for a while? I have to 
uh, hide the answers further. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah. Yes, ma'am. Students, please don't leave the session. Uh, I will write back. Uh, by the time you guys can uh, put the queries in the QA box, and what and all topics you didn't understood, and what you want to know about more of the topics, you can put in the chat box. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, ma sir. Is it done? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me one minute, one minute. Yeah. So we finished with 23rd question, right? We have to go with 24th. Am I audible? Is that clear? Voice is clear? Yes, ma'am, it's audible. Yeah. Uh, coming to 24th question, uh, bamboo shows flowering in, sorry, that is not is in. So bamboo shows flowering in uh, 10, to uh, 10 to 20 years, 50 to 100 years, once in every year, and the D option will be uh, B and C both. So uh, you have to let me know bamboo show flowering in how many years once or every year once or what. So somebody has given once in lifetime, C, C, C. So uh, if you see, yeah, the right answer will be B because the bamboo's lifespan itself is 50 to 100 years and they will show their uh, um, flowering only once in their lifetime. So the right answer will be 50 to 100 years, okay, not 10 to 20 or once in a year. It will be once in their lifetime and their lifetime lifespan itself is 50 to 100 years. So I hope answer B will be the right answer. Hope you got it. So coming to 25th question, choose correct statement about uh, uh, Strobilanthus puntianan. That is the flower, Nila, Nila Kurunji flower. Just now we discussed. We have to find out which is the right statement uh, regarding it. So this plant flowered during September, October 2006. Its mass flowering transformed a large track of hilly areas in Kerala, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu into pink stretches. C will be uh, both A and B. And B is it's, it flowers during April, May 2006. So what will be the right answer for this? Anybody knows regarding this plant? Neela Kurunji plant. So most, most of them, they are telling C, A, C, 25th is C, A. So the right answer, yeah, most of them, they are telling C, yeah, it's a right answer here, 25th. The answer will be this plant flower during September, October region. Uh, so, sorry, se September, October time, that is uh, during 2006. And uh, it's mass flowering transformed the large tracts of hilly areas of Kerala, Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu to pink stretch. So, both the statement is correct regarding the Nila Kurunji, and the answer is both A and B. Right? And uh, coming to 26th question. So, oyster cycle observed in. Again, I have written C is in. So where we can see our stress cycle in primates, in non-primates, in both of them or in the human being. So where exactly you will see this cycle?
So answer, yeah. So somebody had given the right answer. Non premates is the right answer, yeah. So oestrus cycle is observed in non premates. It's the, not the cycle which is observed in the other organisms or human beings. It's the cycle observed only in the non premates. So B will be the right answer. Then coming to 27th question, choose odd ones among the following on basis of hormonal changes in the reproductive phase. So ape, deer, cow, tiger. So what will be the right answer where you can see odd ones among the following? You have to tell on the basis of hormonal changes in the reproductive phase means the in the reproductive phase, there will be a hormonal changes happening. So which one will be the odd one out here? So A, C, B, A, C, B. So most of them have given the answer. Yeah, that's the right one. Apes are the one where on the basis of hormonal changes in the reproductive phase, uh, they are the one where you can't see any um, changes in them or there will be no, these are the one where they are odd one out. In all the other organisms, you can see certain hormonal changes in the reproductive phases. Ape is the only exception where you can't find out any uh, basic changes in them. Then coming to 28th question, that is juvenile phase is related with all except means that you have to find out one statement which is nowhere related to juvenile phase. It is a pre-reproductive phase of an individual. It is of different durations in different organisms. It's a period of vegetative growth and it involves appearance of flowers in higher plant. So juvenile phase is related with all except one statement, which is that statement you would have to tell me. Yeah, D. Yeah. Most of them has given D as the answer. Few has got confused with C. And the question you have to read out properly. Juvenile phase is related with all. It has. It is related with all the statements except one statement. Means that statement will not be apt for the given question. What is that statement they are asking? It's a pre-reproductive phase of an individual, right? Juvenile phase is the phase before reproduction. Hence, it is a pre-reproductive phase. And it is of different durations in different organisms. Definitely, the um, before uh, the juvenile phase or the vegetative phase will be different for different organisms. It is a period of vegetative growth. Absolutely right. And it involves appearance of flower in higher plant. First thing is appearance of flower in higher plants happens after uh, or it is uh, in the reproductive phase. That's the beginning of the reproductive phase, formation of the flower. So that doesn't come under juvenile phase. So most of them has given the right answer, that is D. The next question, 29th question, isogametes present in. Isogametes are not present in. They are not present in where? Um, Cladophora, a fungi, the focus and alga human beings and all of this. So which will be the right answer here? Isogametes are not present in. Which option? Isogamete formation is not present in.
So somebody has given human beings. Isogamete formation. What do you mean by isogamete formation? Similar gamete formation, homogamous. Homogamete formation is not are not present in. So A, A, C, C, D. So isogamete formation is not seen. The answer, most of them has given the answer. No, all are confused here. B, most of them, they are telling human beings. Right, isogamete formation is not seen in the human beings. That's right, but still, cladophora is a fungi and focus and algae both also doesn't show isogamete formation both all the three cladophora focus and human beings all they show heterogamete formation so the right answer here is all of this all the three shows different gamete formation both the male and female gamete formation can be seen in all these three hence the right answer will be d right so hope the answer is clear the answer is d we'll go for the next question you have to find out in the given figure the given figure is of what okay figure is miss okay the picture is missing Fine, I'll go with the next question as the picture is missing here. Okay, we'll go with the next question. Plants. Plants may have both male and female. Plants may, uh, may have both male and female reproductive structure in the same plant. So plants which have both male and female structure, reproductive structure in the same plant, we call it as bisexual, unisexual, monoecious, dioecious. What is the right answer here? I am skipping the 30th question because the picture is missing. So we are doing 31st question where it says plants which have both male and female reproductive structure in the same plant. 31st question, hope you can see here. Yeah, so can you see here, the 31st question here? This is the 31st question. Choose an highlighter, sorry. Can you see the 31st question is here? Plant may show both the uh, male and female um, character. Reproductive structure in the same plant. Plants may show both the male and female reproductive structure in the same plant. It is called uh, bi bisexual, unisexual, monoecious, and dioecious. So which will be the right answer? C is the right answer. B is right, C is right. So here, if you see, if both the male and female reproductive part present in the same plant, we call it as bisexual, right? Unisexual means if uh, um, male and female will be present in the different plants. So second option is not the right. First is fine. Monoecious is uh, monoecious means both male and female uh, reproductive part is present in the same plant. Dioecious means that both male and female plant will be different or reproductive part will be in different plants. So the answer for the 31st question is a that is it is bisexual as well as monoecious okay so one and three will be the right answer as both says that male and uh, male and female reproductive structures are present in the same plant okay so i hope 
so you are clear with the thing we'll go for the next fine uh, we'll go with the 36th question here yeah. so here 36th question what does it say which of the following is are hermaphrodites what is hermaphrodites means okay let's see um, i hope you know as you have gone through the chapter itself so which of the following is are are hermaphrodites cockroach cave worm so it is tape worm earthworm leech what is the right answer here Thirty-sixth question: Which of the following? Have I skipped few questions? I no no. Oh sorry, I have skipped questions here. No, sorry, we will go with the thirty-second. I'm extremely sorry for this. Choose the correct statement. We have to choose the correct statement here. the process of formation of two types of gametes is known as gametogenesis a uh, b in cladophora the two gametes are so similar in appearance that it is not possible to categorize them into male and female gametes such known as heterogametes the male and female gametes morphologically distinct type of gametes in character of fucus and the last option is a and c both so which statement is correct so you have to tell me which statement is correct the 30 second one we are doing what is second option b d somebody is still in 31st question we are in 32nd so d b d so we have to tell which statement is right here the process of formation of two gametes is known as gametogenesis right formation of gametes is known as gametogenesis that's the right statement in uh, in cladophora the two gametes are so similar in appearance that it is not possible to categorize them as male and female no they are heterogametes and uh, and if you see the gametes can be made out as male and female gametes here they are heterogametes and the gametes are distinguishable and uh, the male and female morphological distinct type of gametes is the character of fucus and alga right so here the right statement is a and c b is the wrong statement because the gametes they are telling they are similar in appearance no they are not similar in appearance they'll be different they'll be completely different they were male is motile female will be non motile and they are heterogametes in nature right so the answer the right answer will be d a and c both will be the right statement coming to a uh, 33rd question terminate and pistillate flowers bear and bear on different plants we term it as bisexual unisexual monoecious and dioecious similar question to what we saw before 30th one 31st one terminate and pistillate um flower bear on different plant so somebody is asking saying ma'am these questions are very much similar to both question and bit easy to solve them is it quite enough yeah um, see um not see it is nothing related to your board the questions will be related to your textbooks and your knowledge based upon the textbook so the questions whatever have prepared here is based upon your textbook and little bit here and they are twisted so that twisting is what you have to understand and answer fine 
somebody is answering 34th also we are in 33rd still 33rd question staminate and pistillate flower bear on different plants we term it as what c d d d fine so if you see um staminate flowers means the stamina uh, stamina stamina is the male reproductive part of the flower pistil is the female reproductive part of the flower if the flower is having stamina we call it as staminate and if the flower is having uh, the female reproductive part we say it as pistillate flower so if a plant is bearing both the male and female flowers what we call it as is the question right so what is your answer most of them they have told d so if the flower if the plant is bearing two different types of flower means both the reproductive organs are present in two different plants means they are unisexual plants the plants are unisexual and they are dioecious Bi bisexual as we just discussed bisexual means both the male and female reproductive part will be present in a single plant and monoecious also the same so here the question says both as on different plants so the answer will be unisexual and dioecious so the answer will be um two and uh, sorry the answer will be here which one second and fourth so i have not given the option and uh, d option second and fourth will be the right option as it says uh, they are present on the different plants and you have to choose the odd one out with respect to sexuality cucurbit cockroach cara and none of this based upon the sexuality you have to differentiate or you have to tell which is odd one out among the 34th question it is cucurbit cockroach cara and none of this so which will be the right answer somebody has given answer b yeah d b b a b right fine uh the answer for the 34th question will be uh, yeah most of them sound is not clear somebody is telling sound is not clear is it clear is it clear now sound is clear i hope so the answer for this based upon the sexuality so cucurbit exhibit both male and female cara is uh, somebody has asked what is cara cara is nothing but a, it's a multicellular alga multicellular alga which exhibits the uh, sexuality here that is male plant and female uh, plant will be different right and here uh, the odd one here is the cockroach as somebody told here the right answer will be b the cockroach exhibits the unisexuality is that clear uh, is that my voice is clear sound is clear with from my side so my sound is clear yeah i hope it is clear so coming to 35th question how many of the following is monoecious or bisexual uh, that is papaya cucurbit date palm cockroach marchantia earthworms with potato cara sponge tapeworm leech how many of these are monoecious or bisexual in nature means they exhibit um, 
both the sexuality in single organism how many of this is showing it can you answer can you can i see the answers So yeah, uh, somebody has told D four eight seven seven eight A C. So if you uh, check here, papaya, cucurbit, date palm, cockroach, marchantia, earthworms, sweet potato, cara, sponge, tapeworm, and leech. So altogether we have three to six. So we have uh, altogether 11 organisms here. Among this, we have to find out which is monoecious in nature or bisexual in nature. So here the right answer is eight. Eight of them, eight of the organisms are monoecious in nature. Can, can somebody name which are those eight? Which are the eight? My bisexual no seven is not the answer i have already told answer will be the eight b so you want time I should not tell the answer immediately is what is that query says. So here if you see uh, bisexual, monoecious or bisexual means what? Both the uh, male and uh, female reproductive part will be present in the same organism. That is what is called bisexual here. So if you see leech, is one organism which shows uh, they are bisexual in nature okay and uh, tapeworm is unisexual okay it's not bisexual and um, coming coming to sponge it is uh, monoecious i hope you are getting the answers so okay i'll come from the beginning papaya is monoecious and uh, cucurbit is unisexual, dioecious. And the date palm is monoecious or uh, bisexual. Cockroach is bisexual. Then marchantia is bisexual. Earthworm, yes, bisexual. Sweet potato, no, it is unisexual. Cara is unisexual. Sponge, bisexual. Tapeworm, bisexual. And leech is bisexual. So altogether, eight of them are bisexual. That is monoecious. Hope you got my, you got the answer. Yeah. Right. So I'll go with the next slide. So which of the following is in hermaphrodite? This sorry, I have shown it before only. So most of them also answered it. Hermaphrodite means both the um, uh, um, a reproductive organ will be present in the same organism. So the right answer is cockroach. You have named it already. So we will go for the 37th question. Choose correct statement. So we are talking about 37th question. You have to tell which is the correct statement among this. A diploid parent produces gametes by mitotic division. A haploid parent produces gametes by mitotic division. A haploid parent produces gametes by meiotic division, both A and C. So we are talking about 37th question. I hope uh, your whatever I'm telling is clear. 
we are talking about 37th question and you have to choose the correct statement among it yeah 37 somebody has told b somebody has told c a d a so as we discussed already um mitotic division happens shall i tell the answer so the answer um mitotic division usually happens in the um asexual reproduction okay whenever a parent undergoes asexual reproduction there happens the mitotic division and usually the uh, and the parent which undergoes mitotic cell division or mitotic uh, sorry uh, asexual reproduction are haploid parents so the right answer here is a haploid parent which produces gametes by mitotic division and diploid parents produces gametes by meiotic division right so that will not be a correct statement a is not a correct statement only p will be the correct statement so most of you has given the right answer so next we will go with the 38th question Remember, monera fungi yeah uh, ma'am uh, we have a break time of 15 minutes okay we'll continue after that uh sir there is one more chapter you want me okay. to continue with the same chapter or i'll go with the other one uh ma'am depends on students how they want Students, you okay. want to continue with this chapter? Please raise your hand. How many of them you want to continue with this chapter? I think everyone wants to continue with this chapter. <laughs> okay, so fine. I'll continue with the same chapter. Uh, okay, um, fine. Uh, we will take a break. What 15 time? minutes break. We'll join by 6 8. 6 8. Okay, fine. Yeah, so fine. fine. Ah, and by the time you can uh, remove the. Yeah, I'll remove the answers. Thanks for the breathing time. Yeah. Yes, students, you have break for 15 minutes. After that, again, you have to join back at 6 8. Please be in the session. time the time proves that we have come a long way to get where we are today Dayanand Sagar University with the legacy of six decades had contrived to the achievements today and is throwing light on the way forward our visionaries understood the need to learn and know to do and grow to twiddle and tweak creating the best of the thinkers, creators, innovators, and inventors. In fact, we believe in achieving more than ever before, instilling the commitment to strive continuously to serve the national and global needs. There are challenges we can't ignore, but remember, we are of humankind, and every objective is achievable. By setting our minds, and then on Sagar molds you to achieve the objectives in an environment that enhances creativity and innovation. If we all embrace the spirit that there really is no limit, if we rise to this occasion and come together cross nations, if we integrate and ideate, we can make the future great and live the dream. Our legacy of education takes its root from our founding father, late Sri Dayanand Sagar, a visionary, an educationist, a powerhouse of knowledge and a believer in transforming the world besides a leader par excellence. The institution has contributed to educating the world for over 60 years, carefully building alumni of over 100,000 including accomplished professionals, sports personalities, celebrities spread across the globe. We stand strong as a top-rated university having four campuses with 350 teaching staff. 
educating 4,400 students with pride-filled and powerful alumni network across the globe. Dedicated faculty members who work across disciplines collaborating and lifting us as the top university in the world. Empowering the rising generation and nurturing entrepreneurs. Dayanand Sagar University. Live the dream. Yes, students, any doubts, anything you want to ask me later the sessions? Also, the links have been shared in the chat box. Please join the WhatsApp group, whoever has not yet joined. Uh, yes, Yuvra, next chapter also. Let ma'am complete this chapter. Then after that, we'll start the second chapter. You're welcome, Yuvraj.
you were at the class will start at 6 8 please be in the session
Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, we'll start the session again. Ma'am, are you, are you there? Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, can you hear me? Hello. Uh, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, we can start the session again. Hello. Ma'am, ma'am, audible. Hello. Ma'am, can you hear me? Excuse me, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Are you there in the session, ma'am? Hello? Uh, yeah, ma'am. Now you're audible, ma'am. Ma'am, again, I can't hear you.
Uh, now, yeah, oh, fine, fine. I, I'll be there. Uh, yes, ma'am, ma'am, you can start the session, ma'am. Yeah. So is it clear? Yes, ma'am. I hope my voice, voice is clear, audible. Yes, ma'am, it's audible. Start. Then I can start, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Please continue, ma'am. So fine. Uh, we we are continuing with the same chapter, reproduction in organisms. So we finished almost thirty nine questions. We are about to start with the fortieth one. Myocytes have myocytes. Uh, myo Meiotic division, meiocytes. After meiotic division, whatever the cells we get, so it will have what? One set of chromosome, three set of, uh, two set of chromosome, three set of chromosome, and all of this. So you have to tell me a meiotic after meiotic cell division. Whatever the cell is there, it has how many set of chromosomes? So yeah, I'm getting the answers. 40th one, B, 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 most of them is B. D, B. Right, so I'm getting most of the answer as B, that is uh, two set of chromosomes, right. So um, deployed my, uh, so whenever, a cell undergoes meiotic cell division. So it gets the same set of chromosome, how much ever it is there in the um, parent cell, right, parent cell. So meiotic meiocytes, whatever the meiotic cells are there, they will have uh, the same set of chromosomes, that is two set of chromosomes, that is B. The right answer will be B, right? So next we will go with the 41, question number 41. Choose the correct response among the following. The female sex organ of Cara uh, positioned above antheridium. Testy sac of earthworm positioned below its ovary. Testes of cockroach positioned above ovary of the same cockroach individual. Uh, D, both A and B. I hope uh, uh, in your NCRT you have gone through the Cara, earthworm and cockroach reproductive organs and their positions. So based on that, you have to tell which is the correct response of the given question. Both D, D. Right, most of them are giving the right answer, that is D. So the female sex organ of Cara positioned above antheridium, right? The here, uh, antheridium is the male reproductive part and female reproductive part will be above the male reproductive part here in Cara. And uh, testes of earthworm position below its ovary, no, it is wrong, it is above the ovary. So B is not the right response and testes of cockroach positioned Sorry, um, uh, testes of earthworm positioned below its ovary, that's the right answer. Testes of cockroach positioned above ovary of the same uh, cockroach individual, that's the wrong one. It is not positioned above, it is positioned below. So the answer D, that is statement A and B will be the right response, the correct one. And most of them, they have given the right answer. Thank you. So next we will go with the 42nd given diagram is of what? So it's a bisexual flower of potato, unisexual flower of sweet potato, 
unisexual flower of potato and none of this. The picture is exactly uh, given in your NCRT, but little bit changes is there. You have to carefully see the picture and let me know the correct answer. So answer C C A A A with question mark. I don't know why A with question mark. Fine, uh, let us go with the answer. B is the right answer they are telling. Okay, fine. So um, here the flower is a flower of a sweet potato. But here if you see the flower is showing both the reproductive organs, stamen as well as carpal. Correct both the reproductive organ female and uh, male reproductive organ so it is a flower of uh, sweet potato but it is bisexual flower uh, so there is no correct option given so the option would be none of the none of this so it is a bisexual flower of sweet potato it should have been given bisexual flower of sweet potato but that option is not there so the right answer will be d okay so the next question here among following maximum number of chromosome in neo neocytes of you can see the maximum number of chromosomes in the neocytes of which of these um, plants that is rice maize potato onion so do you have any idea regarding the number of chromosomes in these organisms Somebody has given the answer as C. C. So, um, yeah, uh, so most of them, they have given the right answer as C. Yes, potato is the one which will have maximum number of chromosomes in them. Because rice is having the minimum chromosome, maize and onion will have 32 number, potato will have uh, more than 32. So it will be having the maximum number of chromosomes after meiosis. I hope the answer is clear. Yes, potato is 48. Right, so we'll go with the next slide. Arrange fast. Yeah, arrange in ascending order, number of chromosomes in their gametes. So you have to arrange these organisms based upon the number of chromosomes in the ascending order. So which one will be the right option? You have to tell me. Housefly, fruit fly, maize, cat, cat, rat, butterfly, ape, onion, rice, rat, then ophioglossum, human, potato, dog, butterfly. So I hope you know the number of chromosomes in, in each and every organisms.
Yes, so answer 43rd is C. So the C is the right answer here. That is onion, rice, rat of your glossum. Anybody knows the number of uh, um, chromosomes in these? Anyone here? So there is a question saying, ma'am, how do we remember chromosomes of every organisms? Yeah, so I, I know it is a bit difficult to remember the number of chromosomes in each and everything. So even I don't want to tell you how much is there in this. You have to just remember the ascending order of these things. Means onion will have least, the next will be the rice, the next will be the rat and of your glossum. Of your glossum will have n number of chromosomes in them. So, uh, yeah, uh, nothing much as such. You have to keep in mind the numbers. If you remember, the order is enough. You have to just make the order of each and every organism and just remember the order is enough. Yeah, the next question. So as we had mentioned in the 43rd question, Ophioglossum, what is Ophioglossum is the next question. Answer. So I can see Sarvesh has written the number of chromosomes in those uh, organisms that is C, option C. That is, he has given 16, 24, 42, uh, 1260. So these are the number of chromosomes. Yeah, I do agree these are the number of chromosomes, but keeping them in mind is a bit difficult. If you remember the order is enough. Yeah, we were talking about ophioglossum. What is ophioglossum? So what is it? It is an algae or a, a bryophyte or a pterodophyte, what? So I can see the answer. Somebody has written C, tedophyte, algae, bryophyte. Okay. So um, most of them are confused with. Ophioglossum belongs to the uh, kingdom plantae. Okay, kingdom plantae. And uh, it's it, it belongs to kingdom plantae. It doesn't belong to algae, bryophytes, or tedophytes. And it is the or, um, uh, largest, it is the genus which is having the largest number of chromosomes among the plant kingdom. Means among the plant kingdom, this is the one which is having the largest number of chromosomes that is around 1260. So Ophioglossum is not an algae, bryophyte or enterophyte. It is none of these. So answer will be D. Fine. We'll go for the next question. You have to find the mismatched um, column. That is organism given in column one and two. Uh, sorry, organism is given in column one. And next to them is the given number of chromosomes. And the third is given the number of uh, gametes, the chromosome in the gametes. Okay. So you have to tell which is the right option in this. First is the organism. Second will be the number of uh, chromosome in meiotic cell and number of chromosome in the gamete. So you have to tell which will be the right answer here. Hey, most of 
I, I can see three of them has given the answer A. Right, I can see the responses given as a maximum number of people have given told as A. Yes, maize is the organism which has 24 number of chromosomes in the meiotic cell. And when the gamete formation takes place, as a meiotic division happens, the gamete will have 12 number of chromosomes. Right, and that will be the right answer. I hope 45th question is done. Right. Yeah. Uh, I would like to correct this 44th of your glossum. Of your glossum belongs to plant uh, kingdom plantae. And in, in the kingdom plantae, I didn't tell which is it. Sorry. Uh, in the kingdom plantae, of your glossum belongs to pteridophytes. Okay, so Ophioglossum is a kind of uh, fern, it belongs to pteridophytes. So 44th answer will be C. Hope you got it. And yeah, I can see Harsha's question is the same. Thank you, Harsha, for this question. I hope your answer is clear. Coming to 46th question, in Bryophyta, Pteridophyta gamete, uh, in Bryophyta and Pteridophyta, Gamete transfer needs air, water, biotic agent, and none of this. So which will be the right answer in bryophyta and pteridophyta? Gamete transfer needs air, water, biotic agent, none of this. So given answer, 46th one is B, water. Yeah, B, B, right. So as it has been told in the slide also, uh, yeah, and most of them has given the right answer. Most of you are giving the right answers. In bryophytes and pteridophytes, gamete transfer needs water for the uh, transfer of this gametes from male to female uh, parent body. Okay, so the right answer is B. Then 47th question says, pollen grains carry male gametes, female gametes, neocytes, both A and C, which is the right answer? A, male gamete. Yes, there is no option S yes, as such. So there is a confusion between A and C, but most of them has given the A. Yeah, A is the right answer. Pollen grains are nothing but the uh, male gametes. They are nothing but the male gametes. It, the, they, are, they, do, they do have male gametes, that's it. There is no meiotic cells present in them. Okay, meiosis happens once the uh, male gamete fuses with the female gamete. That is, zygote formation takes place during that meiosis happens. So pollen grain carries only the male gamete yeah most of the answers are right thank you so choose a correct statement in this in majority of organisms male gamete is stationary and female gamete is motile uh, a large number of male gametes liberated during gamete transfer to compensate the loss of male gamete during the transport in majority of organisms Male gamete and female gametes are stationary, and in majority of organism, including human, male gamete and female gametes are motile. So you have to let me know which is the right answer in this.
So answer B, B, D, A. Okay, so let's discuss. In majority of organisms, male gamete is stationary and female gamete is motile. Wrong. Male gamete will be motile and female gamete is stationary. That is what can be seen in most of the organisms. So option A is wrong. A large number of male gametes liberated during gamete transfer to compensate the loss of male gamete during transport. Right. So there will be a large number of gametes, male gametes will be released so that there will be no loss of male gamete during the transport. As the male gamete has to be transported, there may be chances of getting lost. So hence, that is the right option. In majority of organisms, male gamete and female gametes are stationary. No, male is always motile. And majority of organisms include human. Male gamete and female gametes are motile. This is also wrong because male gamete is motile but not the female gamete. So the right option is B. I hope you got the answer. Yeah. And 51, pollen grain produced in. Where is pollen grain produced? In the stigma, carpal, anther, both uh, B and C. Which one? Where is pollen grain produced? Yeah, a little bit confusing here between A and C, I think. More, so few are writing A and few are writing C. I'll tell you why it is, why, what is the answer first and then why it is. Pollen grains are produced in anther. Okay. Why anther? Why not stigma? Stigma is the male reproductive part of the flower. In the stigma, the anthers are present and in the anther, inside the anther, the pollen grains are present in the pollen sac. Correct. So pollen grains are produced in the anther and not, not in the stigma. So the right answer will be the anther. Carpal is a female reproductive part, so that is not the answer. Hope you got the answer. The right answer is C. Um, so dioecious plant shows self-pollination, cross-pollination, both A and B. Then it shows autogamy. So what is the right answer in this? Dioecious plant means plant present in uh, the, the male, both male and the female part will be present in different plant body. So what it shows? So it shows self-pollination, it shows cross-pollination, it shows both A and B, it shows autogamy. Okay, so here the right answer would be yes, you all are right. It is cross pollination. Dioecious plant shows cross pollination because self pollination happens in the flower having both the uh, thing, uh, both the male and re uh, female reproductive part in the same flower. Self pollination takes place. Autogamy means pollination takes place in the same plant. Okay, so the right answer, as you all said, yes, B is the right answer. Cross pollination. Okay, somebody is already ready with 53rd question. Uh, peas. Peas is self-fertilizing, bisexual, both A and B, cross-pollination only. So, what are peas? So, as I said, a few plants will have both the male and female reproductive part in a single flower. Correct. So those undergoes self-fertilizing and those are called bisexual flowers. So here, peas is the one which undergoes self-fertilization and which is a bisexual plant. So the right answer is C. Both A and B will be the right answer. So coming to a uh, few more questions are there.
sir anikesh sir can yes. i go with the next topic can yes, we no, uh, can. or should i continue with the same uh, ma'am uh, what do you feel uh, we can do that because uh, like students they'll be uh, telling about the first chapter also okay. if you are sending this uh, let, question let us finish a few are there pollination means what pollination means transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma before it can lead to fertilization transfer of egg from female reproductive part to the anther before it can lead to fertilization transfer of pollen grain from andrisium to anther before it can lead to fertilization essential step during sexual reproduction of mammals so what could be the answer here pollination means what so it's a very general term pollination so yes yeah most of you have given the right answer pollination is transfer of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma before it leads to fertilization yeah before fertilization happens gamete transfer should happen and gamete tra transfer happens through pollination right so that will be the right answer a is the right answer so coming to uh, 55th question most essential event in sexual reproduction gametogenesis fertilization gamete transfer embryogenesis so which is the critical event in the uh, so means you have to uh, find out which is the first critical event in the sexual reproduction followed by further okay so they say fusion of gametes zygote and then new individual formation then uh, b parent organ organisms fusion of gametes zygote so among this so these are all the steps you know in this uh, sexual reproduction which in this four which is the critical event is what you have to tell yeah uh, i'm not getting much answers why is it confusing is it the question confusing see uh, what they are telling is what is the event which has to happen for a sexual reproduction which is the important event has to happen in the sexual reproduction so gametogenesis fertilization gamete transfer embryogenesis so all these are the events which happens here right so you have to let me know which is the important event among this and or which is the event which is related to this or which is correctly related see they have given a is equal to fusion of gametes means gametogenesis means fusion of gametes no gametogenesis means you know it is gamete formation gamete production fertilization means fusion of male and female gametes gamete transfer transfer of gametes from one individual to another embryogenesis after fertilization embryo formation takes place so you have to relate the a with the right one so let me see the answers 55 somebody has given a somebody has given b somebody has given c fine let's see here a is equal to fusion of gametes yes b is zygote formation yes c is indi new individual no that is wrong a is parent organisms yes gamete formation takes place with parent organisms b fusion of gametes right and c is zygote formation right gamete transfer leads to zygote term yes so uh, c option a is parent organism yes parent organism gives gametes b fusion of gametes yes c is formation of two new individuals no that is a wrong option again d um, a is zygote no they are only goes the answer wrong so our right answer will be b that is gametogenesis is done with the help of parent organism fertilization means fusion of gametes and gamete transfer leads to zygote formation so answer is clear i guess 
and you have to choose the correct statement among this uh, 56th question fusion of gametes is syngamy formation of diploid zygote is the result of fertilization fusion of gametes is fertilization so which is the right answer here or which are this correct statements here can i see the answers 56th question we are talking about 56th question you have to let me know which is the correct statements here answer is c c d b c fine so the right answer here is fusion of gametes is called syngamy syngamy means what we have read in the slide syngamy okay okay let me give the answer the, an the correct answer will be second and third is the correct and one is incorrect means fusion of gametes is not syngamy still answers are coming so if you see syngamy happens in the fusion of a haploid gamete means in the it is it happens in the asexual reproduction so first statement is wrong yeah, syngamy is called it's called fertilization somebody has asked so right we will go with the each and every statement here fusion of gamete is syngamy yes fusion of gamete is called as syngamy yeah it is a fertilization process and the name of fertilization formation of diploid zygote is a result of fertilization is that true yes it is also correct and fusion of gamete in fertilization is correct so here option c that is 1 2 and 3 all are correct will be the right option yes first is correct fertilization first of uh, 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 statement 1 statement 2 and statement 3 all three statements are right so let's go with the last few questions which bird of the following show parthenogenesis parthenogenesis means fertilization uh, the formation of new individual takes place without fertilization 58th question we are talking about 58 which bird of the following show parthenogenesis parthenogenesis means formation of organism without fertilization yeah right so uh, the bird here is the right answer is turkey so in the parrot ostrich and, uh, and the parrot and ostrich if you see uh, the male and female gamete fusion is very much required but here in the tur turkey is the only bird where uh, the female gamete itself leads to the formation of a new organism the process is called as parthenogenesis and the right answer is b right then what is parthenogenesis then development of new organism from male gamete only without fertilization development of new organism from both male and female gamete without fertilization development of new organism from unfertilized female gametes all of this so just now as we discussed what is parthenogenesis yes most of you has given the right answer c development of new organism from 
unfertilized female gamete right that will be the right answer c last question from the topic from n list of organism how man shows external fertilization and internal fertilization respectively how many it's not man how many shows external fertilization and internal fertilization respectively bryophytes alga pteridophytes gymnosperm angiosperm fungi reptile birds mammals amphibians and fishes so here it has to be how many so from the list given below how many shows external fertilization how many shows internal fertilization this is what you have to answer yeah 60th is b a c so the right answer is a so three of them shows external fertilization and the remaining shows internal fertilization which three external fertilization the fertilization takes place you know what is this internal and external fertilization so somebody is telling alga bryophytes and pteridophytes all are external fertilization yes yeah so yeah pranati we will start the next lesson so here yes alga pteridophytes and bryophytes all their uh, fertilization takes place in the water medium the remaining all takes place in the internal fertilization so 3 and 8 is the right answer and this ends the chapter reproduction in animals mm -hmm. so we will start with the next chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants okay i'm starting with the next lesson okay so let's go quick so sexual reproduction in flowering plants so we will go with the first slide so you all know the reproductive part of the flower is sorry reproductive part of the plant is a flower so a typical flower will have two parts androecium and gynoecium so you know what all and what is androecium androecium is nothing but the uh, male reproductive part the male reproductive part is also called as stamen stamen includes the filament as well as the anther okay and uh, gynoecium is nothing but the female reproductive part it is also called as carpel it includes uh, the stigma style then the pollen okay the inside part is pollen tube anyway stigma style ovary and the ovule these four together becomes the carpel and during fertilization you can see the pollen tube also so these two becomes the reproductive part of the 
flower. And uh, coming to this andrisium or the male reproductive part, so the uh, there will be uh, the the consists of a oral or you can see that this will be the male reproductive part. There will be a long thin thread like structure called filament and the anther. Okay, inside the anther we will have the lobes called as anther lobes. So there will be two lobes. We call it as theca. There will be two thecas. Inside the two thecas, there are lobes. There will be four microsporangium, so which develop, which they de they develop into pollen sacs. So these pollen sacs inside the pollen grains will be present. Uh, so this is what is microsporangium. So if you see, uh, the microsporangium it has four layers: epidermis, endothecium. Mid, these are the um, then the middle layer, then the tapetum. So here the outermost layer is epidermis, then inside is endothecium, then the middle layers and the tapetum. So the, here the red dots cell are called as tapetum that nourishes the developing pollen grains. Then the outer three layers are meant for production. So the young anther bears sporogenous sporogenous tissue. The young anther whatever is there inside. They have sporogenous tissue means spore containing tissue, and uh, it, it is known as pollen mother cells. Okay, it's called PMC, pollen mother cells. So, what is sporogenesis then? So, uh, so before sporogenesis, what is microsporogenesis? So, microsporogenesis is nothing but the formation of um, pollen mother cell. Here, yeah, formation of microspore tetrads are the microspores is called as microsporogenesis. So microspores from the pollen mother cells and then this microspores develops into pollen grains is what is the process. Okay, so there will be, I'll repeat it. There will be four microspore tetrads. So you can see the picture here. There will be four microspore tetrads and that it is developed from the pollen mother cells. And this microspores, they further develops into pollen grain, a proper pollen grain, okay? So what is this pollen grain? Pollen grain is nothing but a male gametophyte. It has two layers, that is a, a cell wall, okay, exine and intine. Basically, the outermost layer is called as exine, made up of sporopollenin, okay? The externmost layer is called as Exine, it is made up, made up of sporopollenin. It can withstand high temperature and strong uh, and from strong acids and bases. Usually, in which season does reproduction takes place in plants? Yeah, there is one question here, ma'am. In which season does reproduction takes place in plants? Plants, each plant, it has its own season for uh, the reproduction to take place. There is no particular season as such. Few they produce, you can see as each and every season has its own type of fruits coming out. So the reproduction. So reproduction will have their own seasons. Each plant is having their own season. Coming to pollen grain in time. So inner wall is made up of cellulose and pectin. So the, the both the uh, layers, intine and exine, are the outer layer. Um, that the exine is the outer layer, intine is the inner layer. It is made up of cellulose and pectin. A mature pollen grain has two cells, vegetative cell and the generative cell. So it will have two cells inside a mature pollen grain. One is vegetative cell, the other one will be generative cell. Vegetative cell is nothing but the food reserve and generative cell is meant for reproduction. What is the economic importance of these pollen grains? They are rich in nutrients. Pollen tablets are used as a food supplements. Pollen grains are stored in liquid nitrogen where it acts as a pollen bank. And whenever we want a particular species to grow, we can get this pollen grains and uh, go for fertilization. Pollen grains of some plants are allergic. That is not an important actually, yeah, but we can create the allergy using it. So that will be the importance of pollen grain. And the next one, the female reproductive part, it is also called as gynecium. So it is monocorpulary. So as we see, there, there was four different uh, sections or there were um, four different parts in the andrisium. But here it is monocarpillary means it can have single piston or it can have multi-piston means 
this can have single or it can have many like this okay so the pistil can be present single or it can be many if it is present single monocarpillary if it is present many we call it as multicarpillary in multicarpillary pistils may be fused or it is free okay if you see the picture here so it is multicarpillary but it is fused here the lower part is fused and the upper part is free it is called as syncarpus and sometimes it is fully free uh, like in another uh, like in the other plants like a, a rose and all those things there it is called as apocarpus each pistil has three parts yes the stigma style and the ovary the stigma is the upper part the thin tube like structure is the style and the bulged part at the bottom is called this the ovary that ovary consists of ovules coming to the structure of megasporangium megasporangium is called as ovule ovule is attached to the placenta with the help of a stalk we call it as finical okay so hilum is the junction between ovule and the finical so you can see the picture over here this is the hilum i will just use a laser pointer yeah so this is the funicle funicle is the uh, a stalk and the placenta attached by uh, to the stalk with the help of the uh, sorry ovule is attached to the placenta with the help of the funicle and hilum is the junction between ovule and the funicle and there are two layers here if you see one here, here this side if you can see one two two layers are there those two are called as integuments okay so these are called as integuments you can see outer integument and the inner integuments and there will be small opening in between these integuments we call it as micropyle and uh, opposite to this micropyle end there is one more end that is a base end called as chalazal chalazal end or chalaza then this integuments encloses a part called as nucellus this is the nucellus and inside the nucellus this nucellus is nothing but the reserve food and inside the nucellus is an embryo sac present and that is the female gametophyte so the next is megasporogenesis how this megasporogenesis or megaspores are formed so there will be formation of four megaspores from the megaspore mother cell okay so each megaspore mother cell which is present inside the nucellus will undergo a cell division mitotic cell division to produce four megaspores or so four megaspores and these are all the four megaspores which is also called as megaspore tetrad then coming to the formation of female gamete that is embryo sac inside the embryo sac how the megaspore functions right so i said four megaspores are formed right and this four megaspores among the four one will be functional and the three will be degenerating or three will degenerate so the embryo sac formation from the single megaspore is called as monosporic development that right? because only one spore develops the other three degenerates so what, what happens here is nucleus of megaspore undergoes mitosis it becomes two nucleated move to the opposite edges becomes four nucleated then then again undergoes mitosis becomes eight nucleated cell wall will be laid down around and organization of these uh, female gametophyte takes place where three goes to the chalazal end two comes to the micropylar end and two uh, sorry three comes to the micropylar end and only two remains in the middle so here the distribution is given here what we say the distribution of cell in an embryo sac is eight nucleated and seven celled eight nucleated and seven celled keep in mind three cells that is two synergid and one uh, egg cell will be present at the micropylar end these are the synergids and this is the egg cell and three cells towards the chalazal end and a large central cell with two polar nuclei will be present in the middle so coming to pollination we have already discussed this so just i'll brush up the transfer of pollen from anther to the stigma of the flower is called pollination transfer of anther 
uh, sorry, transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma. Okay, so there are three types of pollination autogamy, gytonogamy, and xenogamy. Autogamy means same flower, transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the sigma of the same flower. So there are a few examples here viola, oxalis, camelina. Uh, these produce two types of flowers, and hence all these transfer takes place in the same uh, uh, flower. So same pollination happens. In that, we have two types. Again, autogamy is of two types, chasmogamous, cleistogamous. Chasmogamous, they have exposed anther and stigma. Cleistogamous, they do not open at all. The flower doesn't open at all. The stigma and the anther, they will be uh, close to each other and the inbreeding happens. Okay. Gytonogamy, the transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of another flower of the same plant. It is a fun it is functionally cross-pollination, but genetically autogamy it means gytognogamy is similar to autogamy, but here uh, the um, pollen grain transfer takes place from one flower to the another flower of the same plant. So you here you can see xenogamy transfer of pollen grains from anther to the stigma of different plants. So that is these are the three types of pollination. The agents required for pollination. Am I going fast? Is it fine? I hope it is fine. Yeah, fine. Thanks for the response. So, agents of pollination first is abiotic agents, that is, non living agents, the wind and water. So if the pollination happens by wind, we call it as anemophily. Uh, so here, uh, this happens commonly in the grasses. So what happens here? Uh, flowers have single ovule in each ovary, numerous flowers packed into uh, together. They are called inflorescence. Here uh, in the pollination of winds, usually there will be no single flower. There will be inflorescence present. That example will be corn cob. Ways for effective pollination means these are the ways of effective pollination pollen grains will be many light and they are non sticky and the stamens are exposed here and the stigma will be very feathery to accept the coming uh, pollen grain so the next one is pollen pollination by water it is also called as hydrophily here this happens very rare usually monocots are in, involved here Valisneria, Hydrilla, and one is Zostera. Zostera is a marine plant. So here what happens? So in lower plants, usually the water is a regular mode of transport for the male gametes. So that is uh, bryophytes and tedophytes, what we discussed in the last chapter. Right. In Valisneria, the female flower reaches the surface of the water by long stalk, and the male flower or the pollen grains are released onto the surface of the water. So here the surf, water, female flower reaches the surface and then male flower releases the gametes and that will be uh, released on the surface of water and it will undergo fusion. So wind and water pollinated flowers are not very colorful and they do not produce nectar. They, are, they don't produce nectar and they are not at all colorful. Coming to uh, biotic agents, yeah, biotic means living agents where animals are involved. Usually bees, butterflies, flies, beetles, moths, birds, bats, etc. All these are involved in the um, biotic agents. So pollination by insects, we call it as entomophily, is more common. Uh, feathers of insects pollinated flowers. So features, what are the features of insect pollinated flowers? They are large, they are colorful, fragrant, you know, they are rich in nectar as well. The flowers secrete a foul odor to attract flies and beetles. Sticky pollen grains will be present. Sometimes some flowers secrete foul odor, very bad odor, which attracts the flies and beetles. And uh, the pollen grains will be very sticky in them and that gets sticked in their legs and that will be transferred. Nectar and pollen grains are floral rewards for the pollination. Yeah, nectar and the pollen grains 
they are the important part of the pollen grains they are the rewards for the pollen grains and pollen or nectar robbers are there they are insects sometimes instead of pollination they sometimes consume this pollen or nectar so they are called as pollen robbers or the nectar robbers so there are certain outbreeding devices outbreeding devices these are called as inbreeding devices the agents of pollination outbreeding devices means here um, to avoid the self pollination so this uh, continued self pollination pollination results in inbreeding as i said certain flowers they are closed in nature they'll be closed and uh, these closed flowers they undergo inbreeding so to avoid it we do some uh, we use some devices to avoid this inbreeding depression so that is avoid synchronization means we should avoid the release of pollen and respectively of the stigma at the same time means pollen has to be removed or the stigma has to be removed at that time arrangement of anther and stigma at different position means uh, the arrangement of stigma and this uh, anther should be uh, changed self incompatibility prevention of self pollination from or self pollen from fertilization that has to be prevented and production of unisexual flowers whatever the unisexual uh, flowers are there that production has to be stopped so all these are the process to avoid our uh, inbreeding post process so pollen pistil interaction shall go fast if you want yeah coming to pollen pistil interaction a process in which pistil recognizes compatible or incompatible pollen by producing some chemicals pistil accepts the pollen compatible pollen and promotes post pollen pollination so what happens usually the pollen grains comes and falls on the stigma of the flower or, or stigma of the female reproductive part where some chemicals are released by the pollen grains for uh, by the um, Uh, pollen grains and they starts germinating okay once they start germinating they produce pollen tube that goes grows through the stigma style and reaches the ovary okay so the ovary reaches to the micropylar end and uh, of the ovule and enters into the enters into the ovule where through the synergids and through the filiform apparatus means through this ovule they will enter filiform apparatus guides the entry of the pollen tube wherever the filiform apparatus are there that uh, that will help in uh, producing the um, pollen tube and releasing the nucleus in them then um, so hence once so once the pollen tube reaches the uh, egg or uh, this uh, ovule the nucleus will be released and there the further fertilization takes place how the fertilization takes place we will see later and uh, yes ha huh. so how the fertilization takes place here so usually the double fertilization happens in the plant body what is double fertilization so here um the male gametes will produce two types of cells i said one is the gamete one is the vegetative cell correct so that happen that both the nucleus enters the um ovule both the uh, uh, male gamete or here if you see one circle i have put so both the male gametes enters the ovule here one first if you see the second picture i have seen i have shown here first fusion takes place where one male gamete fuses with the egg one male gamete fuses with the egg the second male gamete fuses with the secondary nucleus present in the ovule okay so here first fusion takes place between the first male gamete and the egg this forms the zygote second male gamete fuses with the secondary nucleus where male gamete is um haploid and the nucleus is the diploid one they form primary endosperm nucleus which is triploid 3n in number so as here 
two new uh, two fertilization taking place we call it as double fertilization then as there is a fusion of haploid with diploid to formation of a triploid it is called as triple fusion is it clear yeah so in between artificial hybridization also we can do like artificial um there where whatever the desired pollen grains are there we can transfer it to a desired plant to get a desired characteristic plant so that is called as artificial uh, hybridization in that artificial hybridization what we should do emasculation means we should remove the anther from the bisexual flower or of female parent so we should remove the anther from the uh, flower then bagging the emasculated flower will be put into or covered into a bag so see here the anthers are removed and the, uh, the entire flower will be covered with a butter paper or an, any other cover you know in order to prevent unwanted pollen and then whatever the pollen grains we require we will dust it on the stigma that is pollination and again covering it so that the fertilization happens this is artificial fertilization and then you know how once the pollen grain falls the double fertilization and the triple fusion happens once this happens further development takes place where there will be endosperm formation embryo development ovule will be formed where ovule will be into uh, formed into seed and ovary into the fruit so endosperm development what it takes place the primary endosperm cell divides repeatedly to form triploid endosperm tissue okay so primary endosperm whatever is there it further divides into triploid endosperm tissue endosperm cells are filled with lot and lot number of reserve materials which helps in the development of uh, the developing embryo further in the endosperm development primary endosperm uh, nucleus whatever is there undergoes nuclear division to give free nuclei okay whatever the primary endosperm nucleus is there it undergoes further nuclear division to give free nuclei this is called free nuclear endosperm which can be seen in tender coconut that is coconut water what you see the endosperm becomes cellular means they become cellular cell formation takes place and uh, cell wall formation takes place the white kernel of coconut is cellular endosperm the whatever you eat in the tender coconut the white layer is called as uh, cellular endosperm so what we eat as a cellular endosperm and what we drink coconut water is nothing but a free nuclear endosperm right so further embryo development takes place at the micropylar end of the embryo sac so if you see there are different stages of embryo development here so zygote then globular end embryo heart shaped embryo and further the matured embryo will be formed here where you can see there is a radical formation and there is a plumule formation and you can see two different layers we call it as cotyledons i'll explain it so it has embryo embryonal axis and two cotyledons see, as i said there will be one plumule there will be one radical these two are called as embryonal axis and two layers we call it as cotyledons the part of the embryonal axis that is uh, above is called as epicotyl and at the uh, which ends at the plumule so here it is the epicotyl middle is the hypocotyl and the end one is the root cap okay so the root cap or root tip will be covered with the root cap and these are the things which comes under the embryonal axis and uh, that happens in the dicot what happens in the monocot there will be only one cotyledon present there will be no two cotyledons there will be one cotyledon present and uh, that includes in the grass family it is called scutellum the cotyledons of the grass family is called as scutellum the lower end of the embryonal axis is the radical and it is enclosed with a root cap in coloriza that is an sheath an undifferentiated shell a cell sheath will be there as coloriza the 
another portion and will be attached the scrutinum will be attached to the epicotyl and that will be giving it has shoot apex and a few leaves and that will give rise to the um the, you see here shoot apex and a few leaf like structures enclosed in it it is called as coleoptile right so this is regarding monocot monocotyledons embryo how the seed formation takes place from the ovule seed is a fertilized ovule so once the double fertilization and triple fusion happens i hope you are following yeah once the double fertilization and triple fusion hap happens so seed is formed that will be the final product of the sexual reproduction so what does seed contains seed contains a seed coat a cotyledon and an embryonal axis so seed coat and the cotyledons and the embryonal axis will be present mature seed are of two types non albuminous or ex albuminous and albuminous non albuminous seeds means no endosperm will be present there will be no endosperm in this it is called as non albuminous example is pea groundnut beans and all and if it retains the endosperm it is called as albuminous that can be seen in wheat maize and castor this is the endosperm retaining and here if you see there will be very less or no endosperm present so this is called um, non albuminous this is called albuminous the in seeds like black pepper beet and all remnants of nucellus are persistent means the uh, nucellus will be present little bit and it is called as perisperm okay and the integuments hardens to become seed coat whatever the integuments are there of the ovule what we saw they become hard and they will become seed coat and through the micropylar end you can see the entry of water and oxygen which helps in germination and coming to fruit formation ovule develops into seed and the ovary develops into fruit the wall of the ovary develops into pericarp so this is the peric outermost layer is called as the pericarp or water wall of the fruit is called pericarp again fruits are of two types true fruit false fruit true fruit fruits develop only from the ovary example most of the plants will give a true fruit false fruit in this thalamus will develop into a fruit the best examples are apple strawberry cashew all these are the examples where the thalamus the lower part of the uh, uh, flower is, will develop into or the lower part of the ovary will develop into a fruit okay in some species fruit develops without fertilization so all this happens in fertilization but in some species without fertilization so such fruit are called as parthenocarpic fruit example will be banana i hope you are familiar with parthenocarpy parthenocarpy can be induced through the application of growth hormones such fruits are called as seedless fruits so whatever the seedless fruits you get those are nothing but the parthenocarpic fruits where by the application of growth hormones they will develop into fruit so the last part is apomixis and polyembryo so just see the difference between the polyembryon and apomixis polyembryony means formation of more than one embryo from a single fertilized egg apomixis means a sexual reproduction in which seeds develops without fertilization so polyembryony is one zygote many embryo here no zygote formation in apomixis seedling identical as from single zygote but not clones of the parent plant so here seedlings genetically identical and also the clones of parent plant example of polyembryony mango citrus onion and apomixis astraceae and grasses and this completes the revision of the chapter we will start with the question answers uh, we will go fast okay so you have to identify the parts given in the picture here so can anyone tell me the answer for this first one
Yes. Yes, yeah, you are all right. The answer will be the D. So, yes, the first one is ovary. The second one is anther. The third, sorry, second one is anther. Third one is filament. Fourth one is stigma. Right, your answers are right. Second answer, second question. Reproductive organ of the flower doesn't comprises, comprises, sorry. Which doesn't comprises what? Androsium, gynosium, stamen, tapels. What is not involved in this? Most of them has given the answer D. Yes, tepals. Tepals are nothing but this outermost part, calyx. So that is not involved in reproduction. Yes, so it is not a reproductive organ, right? Third question, a typical angiosperm anther is dash with each lobe having dash theca. They are dash. What is it? Question number T. So we are talking about question number three. A, answer A. Somebody has given A, A, B. A, okay. So yes, answer is A because yeah, a typical angiosperm anther is bilobed. Bilobed means it will have two thecas, hence it is called as dithecus, right? Arrange the microsporangial wall in sequence from outside to inside. From outside to inside, you have to arrange the microsporangial wall. So fourth one, somebody has given the answer B. Yes, yes, B. Right, it is epidermis, endothecium, middle layer and tepetum. So these are the series of sequence in the microsporangial wall. So all of you are right, thank you. Somebody is very eager. To answer the fifth one, dash is responsible for nourishment of pollen grain. So, which is responsible for the nourishment of pollen grain? Yes, A. Kavya is right. The answer, tepetum, is the one which nourishes the pollen grain, and that is the right answer. Right. All others have given the right answer. A. Microsporogenesis means what? Microsporogenesis means process of formation of microspore, development of pollen grain from pollen mother cell. It involves meiosis, all of this. Right. Yes, the right answer is D. So microsporogenesis means process of formation of microspore. Development of pollen grain from pollen mother cell and it involves meiosis. So all this process comes under microsporogenesis. Hence, all of this will be the answer. Sporopollenin is absent in. Sporopollenin is absent in. In time, germ pore, exine, A and B both. Where it is absent. Seventh one, answer. B, yes. Yes, so most of you have answered it as B. Yes, germ pore. In the germ pore, the spor sporopollenin will not be present. It will be present in exine and indine and not in the germ pore. Yes, so coming to the eighth question, pollen grain of rice is viable up to? Pollen grain of rice is viable up to how many days or how many months? So somebody has answered. C, A, even in it.
So what is the answer for the eighth one? Eighth one answer. Yeah, somebody has told A, somebody has told. Pollen grain of rice is viable up to 30 minutes. No, it won't be viable up to 30 minutes. It takes several months, as same as a sonaceae. Sonaceae is also a, a, a monocot family. So here the pollen grain is viable for several months. Okay. So the answer is D, both B and C. Okay, both B and C will be the answer that is um, D. So Sneha is telling something sporopollenin is absent in intine as well. 30 minutes. Pollen grain is viable up to 30 minutes. No, Harsha, it is not 30 minutes. It is viable up to several uh, months. And uh, for the question of uh, Sneha, sporopollenin is absent in the Havast. So sporopollenin is absent in germ spore. So as you said, sporopollenin is present in intine and exine, but it is absent in germ spore. You should learn uh, read the question properly. Okay. And, uh, and uh, pollen grain of rice is viable up to several months. It's not up to 30 minutes. It is viable up to several months. I hope the answers are clear. Huh, right. Next, go with this ninth question. Correct. Uh, choose the correct statement. Inside the ovary, in the ovarian cavity, also called as lodicule, megasporangia is commonly called ovules. The placenta is located outside the ovarian cavity. Um, A and C both. What will be the right answer? Ninth one answer. We are talking about ninth answer. Both A and C. Sandhya says both A and C. So the answer is B, megasporangia is commonly called ovules. So the inside of the ovary in the ovarian cavity is also known as lodule. No, it is not called as lodule. It is called as what? Fine. The placenta is located. What is this? Outside the ovarian cavity. No. So megasporangium is called, is also called as ovule will be the right answer i think most of you has answered b yes uh, ovule is attached to placenta by the 10th question already somebody has answered 10th question ovule is attached to placenta by funicle hilum integuments mucilus so the answer will be yes option a funicle funicle is the site of attachment of ovule with the placenta. Telazole end represent basal part of ovule, apical part of ovule, basal part of ovary, apical part of ovary. Which one will be the answer? 11th one, A. Chalaza end will be the basal part of the ovule not the ovary the basal part of the ovule is called as chalazal end option a is the right option 12th question megasporogenesis is not related to formation of megaspore from megaspore mother cell megaspore mother cell undergoes meiotic division for megaspore formation of microspore 
both A and C. What will be the right answer for the 12th one? You have to tell which is not related to, don't get confused, which statement is not related to megasporogenesis. Yes, yes, 12th question, the answer will be C, formation of microspore. Microspore comes in the microsporogenesis, not microsporogenesis. So all other statements are true regarding microsporogenesis. Only C is the right option, which is not related to. Typical embryo sac of an angiosperm at maturity is 8-celled, 8-nucleated, 8-celled, 7-nucleated, 7-celled, 8-nucleated, 7-celled, 7-nucleated. What will be the right answer for 13th one? Yes, 7-celled, 7-celled. So as we discussed, typical embryo sac will have seven cell and eight nucleated, right? So the right answer will be seven cell, eight nucleated. B, not C, B is the right answer. So that is um, two synergids, one egg cell and uh, you remember that picture, three at the chalazal end, three at the uh, micropylar end, and two in the middle. So eight nucleus and cells are seven celled, right? Fourteenth question, identify the parts. Can you identify the parts here? So it is first is okay the option here the second this is the second option just keep in mind this is the second option here so a is antipodals b is synergids c is egg d is filiform apparatus or a is antipodal b is egg c is uh, not a given D is filiform apparatus. Then, so you have to tell which is the right option here. Fourteenth one, first one, C, A. See, fourteenth one, option one is the correct option because A are said to be the antipodals, C is the egg. B are synergids and D is the filiform apparatus. So first one is the right option. The next coming to the 15th question. 15th question, transfer of uh, transfer of pollen from anther to the stigma of the same flower is called transfer of pollen from the stigma of the same flower is called what? 15th one, option B given, option A, option B, option A. So 15th is the right option is, yeah, option A, autogamy, transfer of pollen from anther to the stigma of the same flower is called as autogamy. Gaitanogamy is also a type of autogamy, but here what happens? The flower will be in the different uh, the flower will be in the different plants. Sorry, the male and female flower will be separated. Thirteenth, somebody is still in thirteenth. Thirteenth, we have finished long back here. We are in the sixteenth question. How many of the given characteristics are necessarily present in cleistogamous flower? How many of these characters should be present in the cleistogamous flower? Anther stigma lie close to each other. There is synchrony in pollen release and stigma receptively. 
uh, length of anther and stigma are very different flower is necessarily dioecious assured seed set even without pollinators so how many characters minimum should be present in the cleistogamous flower so most of you have given the option b as a right option but no uh, uh, the option c is right uh, three of these characters any three of these characters should be present in the cleistogamous flower then only it undergoes uh, the uh, respective pollination so answer c is the right one correct so gynogamy is what is gynogamy functional self pollination genetically cross pollination genetically self pollination functionally cross pollination cross pollination both genetically and functionally self pollination both genetically and functionally what will be the right answer Kavya is asking about which options. What are those options, ma'am? Could you tell what are those options? Which options, dear? Sixteenth question, Kavya wants. Sixteenth question options. No, I'm telling any three of this should be present. The, for the sixteenth question, any three of among those, any three should be present as a characteristic. Okay, so seventeenth question, what is the right option? So all uh, uh, most of you are writing option B is the right option. option b option c option b so um, the right option is no it's not b c or d it is a they are functionally self pollination as i said gynogamy is a type of autogamy but genetically they undergo cross pollination okay so the answer will be a coming to 18th one pollination by abiotic agent is a chance factor okay pollen is produced in enormous amount as compared to the number of ovule so what is the right answer for this 18th one so it's a kind of assertion and reasoning kind of question so you have to tell which is correct and which is the right reason for that 18th question b d a all answers are given which is the right answer yeah kavya is correct answer b is the right option that is a and b are the correct answer and a is the right reason for b a is the right reason for b and a and b are the correct option and so answer will be b 18th one is b the pollen grains is in wind pollinated plant should be heavy and sticky heavy and non sticky light and sticky light and non sticky how it should be question number 19 answers d light and sticky d d yes so most of you have given the right answer it is d so we will go with the next 
okay okay we'll go with this majority of angio sperms use dash for pollination so tell me the answer for the 22nd majority of angio sperms use dash for pollination majority of angio sperms uses what for pollination bhavana is telling a and b any other answers okay so majority of angio sperm uses animals for the pollination only tedophyte uh, a very few undergoes wind and water pollination majority of them undergoes uh, or takes animal for pollination hence the answer would be c right and coming to 23rd question dominant biotic pollinating agents are yes and this is a well known question as well as the answer yes all are right it is a bees are the uh, dominant biotic pollinating agent floral rewards in anemophilus amorphophilus is floral reward in amorphophilus is amorphophilus what it will be what what will be the answer for this so what is the answer yes yes the, so right the floral reward is in amorphophilus is colorful petal so it is the largest uh, uh, flower if you see and it has a very big and colorful petals they have and that is the floral reward in this flowers then coming to 25th outbreeding devices are used to prevent so outbreeding devices are used to prevent what self fertilization cross pollination both self and cross pollination xenogamy which one yes so um yeah outbreeding devices are used to prevent self fertilization that will be the right one yeah somebody is answering 26 also kavya is answering 26 inbreeding depression is a result of self fertilization followed by cross pollination cross fertilization followed by self fertilization continued cross fertilization continued self fertilization which is the inbreeding depression results is a result of yes yeah very good so inbreeding depression is a result of continued self fertilization d is the correct option okay so i want to skip 27 28 uh, and let's go with 29th okay e masculation is done in as we are running out of short time we will do uh, some questions e masculation is done in male parent female parent both male and female parent depends on the project what is e masculation is done in answer is b answer is d d depends on the project a male parent
so emasculation can be done um yeah so emasculation is done in the female parent or female flower because they remove the anthers here right and they retain the female part so emasculation is done in the female parent 30th question which of the following is incorrect about double fertilization let's go fast the remaining questions i'll be sharing with you guys so you can solve it together or you can solve it on your own which of the following is incorrect about double fertilization 30th is b somebody has telling syngamy results into dyad of cells So what is the answer for this? Syngamy results into dyad of cells. Dyad means a group of two cells, right? So here the incorrect regarding double fertilization is right. Syngamy results in dyad of cells. No, it, 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 that, 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 is, that is nowhere related to double fertilization. Okay, so B is the right answer. So triple fusion is? What is triple fusion? Fusion of third male gamete with polar nuclei, fusion of three haploid cells, fusion of second male gamete with egg cell, fusion of three haploid nuclei. What is it? Yes, so yes, everyone is right here. Fusion of three haploid nuclei is known as triple fusion. Which of this is correct? You have to tell which of this is correct. 32nd question we are discussing. Syngamy is triple fusion plus double fertilization. Double fertilization is equal to syngamy plus triple fusion. Triple fusion is equal to double fertilization minus syngamy. More than one option is correct. So 32nd question, what does it say? So it is confusion between B and D. Yes. So here, syngamy means, syngamy is nothing but fertilization, in which triple fusion and double fertilization takes place. Yes. And double fertilization is nothing but fertilization and triple fusion means double fertilization is nothing but syngamy and triple fusion as well. So here, what we can say is a uh, triple fusion is nothing but double fertilization minus syngamy. That is the only option which is wrong. So we can say more than one option is right. So whoever has told D is the right option. Yes, D is the right option because we have both A and B as the right option. Okay. Central cell after double fertilization becomes what? 33rd question. Central cell after double fertilization becomes zygote, P and P E C embryo. What is P and P E C and all you remember? Hope you remember. So Kavya is telling B is the right option. Central cell after double fertilization becomes what? Primary endosperm nucleus or primary endosperm cell.
central cell after double fertilization leads to so everyone is bit confused central cell after double fertilization becomes primary endosperm endospermic cell that is c c will be the right on answer not the primary endosperm nucleus so c will be the right answer it will be primary endospermic cell coming to 24th question post fertilization includes how many of the following events post fertilization includes how many of these events endosperm development zygote formation embryo development seed formation fruit formation how many um, of these following events happens post fertilization four four happens four three four see after fertilization what happens after fertilization zygote formation happens right after fertilization uh sorry embryo development happens seed formation happens fruit formation happens right so it is post fertilization means after fertilization you should check and the right answer will be c okay the third one third one c is the answer three three should happen uh during the post fertilization process okay you have to correct i have to select the correct statement here endosperm development precedes embryo sac development endosperm development precedes embryo development embryo and embryo development precedes endosperm development more than one option is right so what could be the correct statement here you have to select the correct statement here so nobody knows the answer here 35th question endosperm development precedes embryo sac development no endosperm development precedes precedes embryo development it's not proceeds it precedes right so answer b will be the right answer so in free nuclear endosperm pn undergoes successive nuclear division pc undergoes successive cellular division pn undergoes successive cellular division more than one option is right so 36th question can anybody answer fine harsha is the only one who is answering okay i'm getting the answers now so yeah in free nuclear endosperm pen primary endosperm nucleus undergoes successive nuclear division so a will be the right option so here nuclear endosperm is there so nucleus will undergo nuclear division so a will be the right answer for the 36 coconut water from tender coconut is dash and white kernel is dash what is it coconut water from tender coconut is dash and white kernel is dash so here given cellular endosperm free nuclear endosperm free nuclear endosperm and cytoplasmic endosperm free nuclear endosperm cellular endosperm cytoplasmic endosperm and cellular endosperm this option yeah most of you has given the right option there is a confusion between a and c i guess yeah the right option will be c coconut water from tender coconut is free free nuclear endosperm and the white kernel is the cellular endosperm okay so whatever the water you drink is a free nuclear endosperm and whatever the white kernel you eat of is a, is the cellular endosperm so answer will be c endosperm persists in mature seed is endosperm which persists in mature seed is so 
so bhavana is the only one to answer yeah okay fine yes so the answer for 38th one is a 38th one is a castor is the one which retains or which persists endosperm even after the maturity so that is the answer for the 38th one So, Anikesh sir, should I stop or I can continue? Uh, yes, ma'am. Ma'am, we can stop. Uh, ma'am, you can send this uh, PPT or slide to me. I can forward it to students so that they could practice it, uh, the further questions. And in the next session, you can just ask them the uh, answers for the, those questions. It will be like a test for them. Hello, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, you are not audible, ma'am. Fine. Meanwhile, hypocotyl terminates in plimule, radical, root tip. More than one option is right. So, what will be the right option for 39th question? Anybody to answer? Hypocotyl terminates in. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, I'm audible. So fine, I'll stop the session here and most of the questions uh, were answered, with, which went well. And the remaining I'll be sharing with the sir. So I will share with you and uh, you can practice in, the, in your home personally. Right. But thank you, everyone. Thank you for the patience. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Okay, students. So we'll end the session here. Tomorrow we have mathematics. Without any confusion, we have mathematics. We'll uh, have the four hours of mathematics by Malik Arjun, sir. So please be on time tomorrow as well. And uh, I'll be sharing the complete notes shared by ma'am to you guys. And please solve the questions which are pending so that uh, ma'am could question you in the next session and you could answer properly the uh, all the questions, answers and all. All right. So we'll end the session here. We'll conclude here. We'll see you tomorrow at four o'clock. So please be on time at the session. Sir, I can leave the session.
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You can leave. You are in mute, so yes, I can leave the session, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ma Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome to the School of Engineering at Dhanan Sagar. University, main campus, Haroholdi, Kanakpura Road, Bangalore. A place that values research, innovation and creativity. Our industry-aligned curriculum offers a blend of theoretical knowledge, practical experience, academic projects and internships for a rewarding career in engineering. With an interdisciplinary approach, you can explore your interests by selecting open electives. The on-campus innovation labs led by professors of practice provide immersive learning and expertise to find the best solutions to real industry problems and give a different dimension to the students' mini and major academic projects. Our Center for Entrepreneurship supports startup opportunities and provides a perfect platform to launch your next big idea into successful ventures. We also prepare you for advanced studies in the latest futuristic technologies. Our BTEC programs offer the perfect combination of academic rigor and functional experience in this ever-evolving technological landscape of the future. Experience a whole new world of academic excellence in a global environment. Dayanand Sagar University. Live the dream. students you can uh, leave the session now i will see you tomorrow at 4 pm uh, tomorrow you have mathematics so make sure you guys are on time don't be late